And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the prosecution is not going to get that man today. No, because I'm going to get him. This is the Hagman and Hagman Report for today. It is Friday, October 4th, 2013. I'm Doug Hagman, co-host along with my son Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report. Folks, you're in for a wonderful program tonight, a fantastic show tonight. Uh, three hours of unbiased, uncensored news information analysis. Tonight, all about the economy, the government shutdown. Is it really about the government shutdown? Uh, you're listening to the only news show, ladies and gentlemen, where we break down the news presented to you in three dimensions. So get out your 3D glasses because we are going to be adding the depth to the news, the news beyond the headlines, beyond the fog of lies. Now, we broadcast uh, for the new people listening, and there are many. We do broadcast live each and every weeknight from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Our home base on the Internet is homelandsecurityus.com. We're also simulcast by the Christians United Broadcasting Network. There you could tune into the Hagman and Hagman Report.com. Spell it all out. Two ends on Hagman. The Hagman and Hagman Report.com. I just want to thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight and thank you for your belief, your trust in us as we walk through this really this minefield of information together. Uh, tonight we are going to be joined by Mr. Steve Quayle. I consider Steve one of my very best friends, one of uh, a brother in Christ. I consider Steve a uh, uh, wow, uh, uh, just an excellent scriptorian, uh, excellent uh, watchman on the wall, uh, just a prolific author. I don't know. I think he's authored uh, a, a dozen books at least. His, his latest, uh, uh, you've got to get your hands on his latest. And we'll also be joined by V, the Gorilla Economist. Now, Steve Quayle's website, for those who don't know, and I can't imagine those who don't, is stevequayle.com. For V, the Gorilla Economist, con concurrent with his debut on Coast to Coast AM, oh, I don't know, about a week and a half ago, he uh, opened a website roguemoney.net that's roguemoney.net both are hard linked directly off of our website at homelandsecurityus.com and I think that's great Joe, uh, welcome to tonight's program it's going to be just an awesome program tonight yes it is I'm very uh, excited to hear what Steve and V have to say and we do have Steve on the line with us now we are waiting for V I will bring Steve on Good evening, wow. Steve. How are, how's things going on? How well, are things going? Yeah, you know, greetings, everyone. And and by the way, I just want to. I've been getting emails all day. Uh, Lou Rockwell and others are putting out all these stories. And I'm not saying Lou's just carrying information. I'm not saying disinformation. But there are a lot of websites talking about Yellowstone Park. So most people don't understand that if the super volcanoes becoming active and all that stuff. Doug and Joe, I've photographed Yellowstone Park every year for the past 43 years, both in visible light and infrared. I, I'm really well connected with the geologists and the different people that would be in the know to know if there's any warning. So what I think is the noise out there, and I'm just saying this because I'm 90 miles uh, north of Yellowstone Park, actually by helicopter in less than 20 minutes. Wow. But the point is, is that, and I mean, I can get down there in a moment's notice. That's not bragging. It's just that I've had uh, alerts. Uh, they've landed in my yard and take me down there because people said, oh, it's going to blow, it's going to blow. Well, one of the things I do is when I fly over the lake, there's a specific area where the the activity where most of the seismic uh, activity takes place, not just seismic, but the area where it shows the greatest concern would definitely show hot on thermal, which it does not at this time. 
But more than that, because I get Doug consistently, what a hypocrite. I live on the uh, bridge of a, or the, whatever, the edge of a volcano and stuff. Well, let me tell you this. Henry Groover was up here about a year, uh, well, a year, maybe a year and a half ago. And God specifically sent Henry. Now, I got news for you. Nobody in the world I know, none, nada. And I'm talking about verifiable, uh, true uh, eyewitnesses can even claim to have had the miracles that Henry's had. And he was sent to Yellowstone Park to a specific point in the park. And the Lord commanded him to speak to the volcano and to literally say it will not erupt. Now, Henry is a man who had the blessing of going to Two-Step Adder Island off of Okinawa that was uninhabited due to the amount of poisonous snakes. And when Henry tore down the high places, those snakes literally disappeared overnight. So I got news for you. Henry Groover would uh, take his place in history as uh, being, uh, you know, the one who absolutely, and I'm, I'm not lifting him up and just saying that, what a wonderful, loving, kind, powerful man. So saying all that is to say specifically this. Yellowstone is literally my backyard. Uh, I get down there more than I'd say most people, and over the 42 years I've been photographing it, I graduated from MSU with both still photography and motion picture production, and then also had a minor in art history and anthropology. So I get down there more than most people, and I doubt there's anybody in the country that has more photographs. My photographs of Yellowstone, each geyser, some of them are up on my website, stevequail.com. There's, I, I just don't know of anybody. I'm not claiming that in a braggadocious state. I'm just saying I know what I'm talking about. Typically, when Alaska has the earthquakes, there is a tie between Alaskan quakes and activity in the park. There have been days when Yellowstone Park has had 900 micro tremors. So everything I know and everyone I know and people that I know will talk off record to me that are in the know. There is no issue with Yellowstone at this point. Now, saying that, Bozeman, Montana, had what I think they call them directos the other night, and we do have a lot of weather modification going on over the state of Montana. We've already had our blizzard. Yesterday we had our blizzard. We've got a lot of snow in the mountains here already. But for the record, I'm just saying to all of you that are panicked about the newest thing to worry about, don't. You know, here's the point, Doug. Tonight, V and I are going to talk about the, not only the financial, but the state of affairs in the whole United States. In the United States. You've been talking. I heard a little bit of your intro. You know, this shutdown is as phony as it can be. The, you know, there's no lack of funding, except, isn't it interesting, for the national parks. Why would they shut national parks down? Why would Montana federal lakes or uh, property on federal lakes boat ramps have uh, concrete barriers uh, 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 placed on the ramps so you can't, you know, get your boat in the water and stuff? Unless and they're going in at night. You tell me they don't have any money yet. They can, you know, pay a top dollar to get people working from midnight to six out of sight and in the uh, hours of darkness. So what we're dealing with tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is we're dealing with a total facade. Everything that happens is orchestrated. Nothing happens by chance. And even now you're seeing some of the park rangers in Washington, D.C. saying they've been ordered to make life miserable. Did you see that, Doug and Joe? Oh, yeah, yeah they've absolutely. Been, yeah, they've been ordered to make life miserable for the vets. Now, here I want to I say something to the vets. Even vets have gotten on my case about giving warnings. I would say this. Do you want me to give you the warning and ask yourself this? Who else told you? And I, listen, this isn't defensiveness. It's just a heads up to what's going on with the vets. I'm hearing emails. You got, forgive me. I'm getting emails and getting phone calls from vets that are not getting their medication. They're being denied access to the VA. They're being stonewalled. Some of these brothers in the Lord are waiting eight to ten months. So I just say horse feathers. How's that for being nice, Doug? To all of you critics, especially the vets, when you say that I'm overreacting, I have sat down with some of the most amazing men in the world, and they have laid the plans out ahead of time. I tell people, all I am called to do by the Lord is warn and prepare, warn and prepare, warn and prepare. And again, uh, given the amount of angst, A-N-G-S-T, in the world, and concern in the United States, and look, we are being terrorized mentally. 
because it used to be we didn't have to worry about going to sleep at night and waking up in the morning to go to work. Now we go to sleep at night, we don't know what's going to come to our door at night, and we don't know that there will be a job tomorrow. So, ladies and gentlemen, this whole thing that we're talking about, the economy of the United States, is an absolute takedown. This is the, if you will, the phoenix being uh, caught on fire so that the new world order can come about. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to quote Kyle Bass's interview with one of the administration's uh, head guys when they said their, their goal is to destroy the dollar. It also shouldn't take a rocket scientist, and, and I would draw everyone's attention to the fact it shouldn't take a rocket scientist to know that Christians are being persecuted all over the world, that they're being persecuted in this country, they're being persecuted in the military, and it's about bloody time that men in the pulpit stand up and scream bloody murder. Because when we fail to take on our brethren who are being slaughtered worldwide, that slaughter is coming to the United States. You know, Doug, one of the hardest things I've ever had to overcome, and it's been tough, and thank God for every one of you that intervenes and intercedes for me, and I'm talking about intervening on a level of thank you for the mighty men and women of valor that have literally brought uh, me to the point where I can still speak without being murdered. The point is, is that I'm called to warn and prepare when I met V, V and I made contact through, I think he heard one of the shows and stuff, we just started communicating, and I realized that here was a brother in the Lord that had been raised up and given great wisdom and great position and prominence in the financial field before he saw uh, certain things taking place and had to leave some of his former employers due to shenanigans. That's about the safest I can say. So tonight we're going to try and cover a whole lot of territory. We're going to cover a whole lot of subject matter. But ladies and gentlemen, do not think for one instance that this is happening by chance, that this is just a Republican. The Republican and Democrats, there are as many traitors in the Republican Party, traitors to the Constitution, as there are Democratic traitors. The fact that we've sat back and allowed our veterans to be diminished, to be minimalized, to be absolutely vilified, nullified, and, and having them having to give up all their rights, including their guns, yeah, they can go and fight foreign enemies, but they can't be uh, trusted to defend themselves. I understand, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on. I pray tonight after V and I speak that you will, too. Go ahead, V. And uh, V, I'm bringing you on now. I just want to say there welcome, V. Uh, uh, folks, uh, l ladies and gentlemen, V, the gorilla economist, his website is roguemoney.net. That's roguemoney.net, an excellent website. By the way, it it's a membership-based website. That's a membership-based website uh, worth every penny. It's uh, And it's pennies. I, I think pennies a day, actually. It's not very much at all. It's $2.99 a month. It's a great uh, informational portal for the uh, economic side of things. Mr. Gorilla Economist, welcome. Uh, great to be back, Doug, Joe, Steve. It's uh, a wonderful evening here in, uh, in New York, and uh, as the world sits around and waits uh, to see exactly how things will play out in, in Washington, D.C., in the District of Cronies, uh, with this whole staged theatrical shutdown uh, every day I get emails from many people, not just in the everyday public life, but also people that are in the financial world. They're all wondering, when is this shutdown going to stop? Are they going to reopen for business? Uh, will this be the end game? Uh, will they not ever open again, causing the whole economy to slide? Uh, one thing I will tell you, it is pure theatrics, because this shutdown couldn't come at a better time. And the reason for that is this. Uh, one of the articles that I detailed is called The Financial Fog of War, and it's on roguemoney.net. Uh, in it, uh, you see the biggest problem that we've had was the rising interest rates in the, in the bond market, especially the 10-year. Now, we've, uh, you know, we've flirted with the 3% mark, which is a very, very uncomfortable position to be in. And then we flirt, uh, we flirted a little bit with a with a with a 3.01, 3.02, and it was getting very uncomfortable. So, with the rising interest rates and the rising bond market, they have to do something in order to create the distractions that they need in order to bring this bond market down. Number one, number two, smash gold and silver price. And I, folks, I can't emphasize enough. If you understand, if you take the time out of your uh, out of your day to day life. 
and begin to study the history of banking, you would begin to understand that gold and silver, precious metals, has always been kryptonite, for lack of a better word, kryptonite to these banksters. They hate it. Uh, they hate it because they cannot run the type of fraudulent games that they currently do with a gold or precious metal backed um, currency or, or a gold standard, so to speak. And folks, most importantly, they can't do what they do if, if Congress had control of the money supply and the issuance of credit. So when these interest rates began to rise, they needed to do something. The plan was given by the bankers to go ahead. You see, these politicians cannot do anything without getting permission first, okay? So this theater of left and right, this theater of Democrat and Republicrat, is, that's all it is. It's just theater. Once they were given permission and the bankers said, okay, you can go ahead and you can do the shutdown because what we need to do is we need to go ahead and get those interest rates down on, on the 10-year because we need to continue the shenanigans that we're doing. And we need to smash gold and silver. And that's exactly what you've seen. Now, how did this come about? Folks, one of the bubbles that were beginning to rise, okay, was the home, the real estate market, okay, the home buying market. It, it started to rise. And then as it was rising, the Fed's uh, endless money printing created a, a, a negative effect on the, home, um, on the real estate market. And that negative effect was because of all this printing, interest rates on mortgages began to rise. And we've seen massive jumps from 3.5 to 4.75 in a matter of a week or two. I mean, it was tremendous. So they had to keep the gravy train going. They have to keep it all going. And the question becomes, well, why do, you, why do they got to keep it all going? They got to keep the buck, the, this debt bubble going. And they have to keep kicking the can down the road because they're not done yet, okay? They're not done yet siphoning all the wealth. They're not done yet destroying completely the middle class. We're almost dead. The middle class is almost gone, but not yet, okay? So when they created this government shutdown, what that did is shut off essential services in the financial sector in terms of the IRS not being able to verify W-2 forms. And you need to have those, you know, tax forms, W-2 forms, 1099, things of that sort, verified in order for you to get a mortgage, in order for you to get a home equity line of credit, a home equity loan, anything that has to do with purchasing a house or, or taking out its equity thereof. You've got to have these tax returns verified. Now, with those things shut down, a lot of the housing uh, market bubble that was created was a lot of speculative buyers, number one, and investors. Now, these people are not looking to stand in any, for any kind of long-term position in the mortgage or, or, or a housing market. Because of the shutdown, folks, we're starting to see a massive run from real estate into the bond market. And, folks, you know, when I, when I say people who are, who are speculative, I want you to also think about it. it's not just individuals that are doing this, but... The bigger impact is the firms. There's a lot of firms, okay? Blackstone dumped 30,000 properties that they owned, okay? So it's, it's, it's not just individuals, but it's also financial firms that are buying property and flipping it because they think it's a good investment. So now, all of a sudden, the bond rate goes down, metals goes down, and the bankers are making a windfall on profit. This also is covering up for the fact, and this is, no, this is a... Uh, uh, this shouldn't be any sort of a revelation to anybody. The um, the bank profits, okay, the, the the total bank profits of what they've actually made in the last year or so has fallen to zero. So the question becomes, you know, they're they're reporting all these quarterly earnings reports where all oh, you know such and such bank and such and such company had a quarterly profit turn of you know X amount of, of dollars. One of the things that people need to understand, just because that there's a quarterly earnings report and a company on paper seems to have turned a profit, it does not mean that any profit was actually made. Oftentimes, what a company does, it takes the money that it quote-unquote earned as profit and begins to buy back its own shares. 
It begins to reinvest in its own capitalization. So whatever profit you had, it's gone. Okay, it's not even there. So all this, gentlemen, what it's simply doing is, is, is bubbles. We are in what's called, what I call, a speculative stagnation, where there's no volume in the real estate market, but yet, you know, the, the real estate's going up. There's no volume in the bond market. People are dumping bonds. My, my source is over at PIMCO, which is the largest bond fund in the world, folks. They've dumped $30 billion since September of U.S. Treasuries. $5 billion was dumped in the last month alone. So there's no volume in the bond market. There's no volume in the stock market. But yet it's over 15,000 points. So this shutdown couldn't come at a better time. It is a perfect distraction. It is a perfect way to, to create the necessary volatility and just enough fear just enough chaos for the banksters to work behind the scenes to pilfer and pillage the wealth of the Americans. So what you're saying, V, if, if I understand this correctly, the, the powers behind this charade, this play, this what, what we're seeing right now, they can push the button at any time. The fact that they haven't pushed the button to really unplug everything, to take the, to take this whole system down, they're just they're just not done robbing us yet. That's the whole thing, Correct. right? Uh, okay. Exactly. See the the thing that I want everybody to understand. Okay. Now everybody talks about you know uh, order out of cow, you know order out of chaos. Okay, folks. Picture the banksters as a demolition team. Okay? They're not done wiring up the structure yet. They got a lot of the explosives placed at very key at very key joints and stresses. They got it all placed very well. But they're not done wiring the building completely because yes, is it order out of chaos? Yes. But one thing I want people to understand is this is this terminology. It is going to be a controlled demolition. They can't pull the plug when they still have some of their guys in the building. Uh -huh. They can't pull the plug if there's still a few more sticks of dynamite to be placed at key joints. They just can't pull that plug. And, and, and by the grace of God, we still have some time left. We still have it because... Thanks to the alternative media, which, you know, I'm calling it the new media, because that's what we are. We are the new media. This is real journalism, folks. Hagman and Hagman Report, SteveQuell.com, RogueMoney.net. These are real journalistic websites and information you get right here. And we, as part of the new media, we exposed a lot of these things. We've cause them to, to pull back a little bit. And they're on their heels. I, 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 I get all the con all my sources and the contacts that I have, and, and I see it just through the numbers. All the things that are being projected towards me is that they're on their heels. Now, they're, they're in a little bit of a disarray, and that disarray buys us some time. You see, because Syria... Yeah. And again, I gotta, I gotta bring it back to Syria. Yep. Syria was the key piece. It was the key explosive that's been laid, laid at the central struss, and it was supposed to bring the whole building down. So we screwed that up. So In a big way. They're yep. not done yet. Now, mm -hmm. now, now V, are, are we going to see? And this is a question I, I get a lot. Um, are, are we going to see a, a, a Cypress-style Cyper event take place first? It, it, you know, uh, pe people, um, I, I like mental images, too. Uh, I see a car going o over a cliff and then smashing at the bottom of the cliff in, in a million pieces. Is that the way things are going to go, or is this car going to go off the cliff and hit a rock here, hit a hit a, a boulder there, um, you know, and, and gradually break up before it does hit the bottom? If the car 
was the or is the economy how is it going to play out is it going to be a bumpy ride down with many hits and and strikes and um explosions or is it going to be just one big bang perfect great analogy i'll put it to you this way picture the whole entire american family that's all of us guys picture all of us on a on a, on a bus and we the bus just went off the cliff it went off the cliff, and we've hit a couple of ledges. And now we just hit one ledge, and that ledge that we've impacted is holding us. Okay? That's where we are right now. Now, we're all alive. Some of us are battered, bruised, and injured. Oh, I'd say about 52% of us are battered, bruised, and injured, just like 52% of Americans. No job on welfare, can't find a job, struggling, kids are hungry, all sorts of financial stress and turmoil. The other half of us are okay. We're fine. But we're still sitting strapped into our luxury coach seats, and we're thinking, okay, everything is fine. The, the structure still remains in the bus. The, the flat-screen TVs in front of me are still running, so uh, I'm going to keep watching that. And there's about, you know, 1% of us that are awake and we realize, holy crap, the bus just went over the cliff and we're hanging on this ledge. Unless we get out and get help and pull this bus out of this ledge, this thing's going to go over because this ledge that we're on is not going to hold for very long. And that's the analogy that I'd like to give for this economy. Okay? It's a great analogy. So, and, and, and we're the passengers. Yeah. And you know, since the bus has already gone over the ledge, there's no chance of um, pulling the driver out of the seat, getting in the bus uh, seat, uh, driver's seat, and putting it in reverse and going back up the ledge at this point. I mean, th now, there's no way of that happening. No, uh, the bus represents not only the, the, the people represent America. The bus represents the system. We can't save the system, but we can get the people out of the system before the system crashes and, it's, and, and it explodes and it's done. Let the driver go with the system because it is the drivers of this country that got us into this mess in the first place, and they deserve what's coming to them. But it's our job, those who are awake, to get everybody out of that bus. Great point. Steve, what do you think of that? What, what I think and what I know and what I'm seeing is, though, no, I agree with it's a planned uh, demolition I think the issue when it looked like Syria was a go, V made the statement. I'm setting off everything. What happened is, and I believe it was an act again, a divine reprieve, whether God uses the Russians, God uses whoever, God uses the base. He, there's a scripture, Doug, that says that the Lord, in judging the, the uh, kingdoms that turn against him, sets up over those kingdoms the most wicked of men. Kind of explains where we're at in this country, I would yeah. guess. But the point being is, is that what we fail to recognize, and this is obviously V is an economist, he's a financial consultant, he's a, oh, good night, he wears a lot of hats. What is going on right now from my perspective, and he has friends and, and contacts, I don't even know who they are, never ask, and by the way, I never ask names, so if you want to volunteer information to be verified, you don't have to worry about, don't tell my name, and for the record, any of you who send me alerts, I will never put your name up, even if you ask me to, I won't, so it's just, it's, that's not the issue, it's the who will tell you what's going to happen, so when you see everybody, like, here's the thing, they don't want just some of it. They mean the Illuminati. And this is what V is, I'll make it even a little plainer. What he's saying is they want all of it. And so, well, there's yet uh, the last, if you will, uh, ruble to be uh, grabbed, the last piece of gold bullion, the last piece of silver. They're doing this. Now, now I want to speak, and I'll let V speak to the financial issue, but I want to speak to the nation that's under judgment. The bottom line is, and this is what I'm called to do, and this is why we dovetail so well, the, when God judges a nation, 
obviously one of the ways he does it is he allows pagan nations and completely wicked nations to steal the works of the hands of the people that built the nation prior to them going wicked. Does that make sense to you? Deuteronomy talks about the curses of God, and, and there are more curses than the blessings, but basically there's, there's a passage that says, Strangers from without will possess you from within. I have received one half a dozen, six specific emails talking about foreigners, Asians, uh, high-dollar clothes, high-dollar cars, visiting some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in the United States, taking pictures. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the record, Pastor Langford and others, a couple other guys, got the word from the Lord two years ago that America was in bondage, but soon the bondage would turn to captivity. What I think most people have got to understand, and Hawk heard in real time a recording of a Canadian general talking about, when you see all these FEMA camps and everything, do you understand that everything we own, you own, I own, if they get their hands on it, that becomes a spoil of war. And I submit to you, Doug, that not only have the homes already been uh, dibbed, if you will, is that uh, behind the scenes, our own, uh, the I won't say our own, but the entities that are running this country have already sold everything lock, stock, and barrel down to the last uh, 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 oil painting on the wall or the last Canon camera or whatever. Just say it. Imagine this. Imagine the greatest fire sale in history as the land burns and all it's just like what happened in germany and some of my uh... german listeners remember this but when the allies moved in the men they took everything they wanted the art they want they pillaged germany and a lot of the great treasures have yet to be uh... found that which wasn't moved to switzerland was moved to south america but this is what's going to happen it's going to rape pillage and plunder and see this is what's hard for americans to grasp when it isn't happening before their eyes, they believe that, oh, that's off in a distant future. Yet the people that were mowed down in the Kenyan Mall, they went shopping that day. They never thought it would be the last day they'd ever shop. So the point that I'm trying to make in all this is that I, I would just, the only thing I would disagree with Vion is as the numbers of the middle class in my mind, and I'm a little more final than he is, I see the end result. The middle class has been destroyed. The money to the small businesses is cut off. What Obamacare and all the draconian uh, legislation will do, it will strangle the lifeblood out of uh, uh, the remaining businesses. And I think it's Hobby Lobby or somebody it sent a letter out that went on the Internet just claiming they've been in business for decades, and now because of Obamacare, they're going to shut down, what is it, four or 500 stores? You see... When Americans don't speak up, they feel that somebody will speak up on their behalf. And if anybody had my photo of the day, I would encourage you all to go to steve.com to see the photo of the day. Because the interesting thing about my photo of the day is, is that it's a tin metal chicken, a rooster, that's rusted. And I said it's the mascot of uh, the American pulpit in rebellion against God. I didn't use the words rebellion against God, but I basically said the apostate uh, preachers in the pulpit. Now, why did I put a chicken up there? A chicken is absolutely a less regal bird than the eagle. And where we once soared with eagles will be now, and here's a great metaphor, will be like looking for land to peck out the most meager existence. You see, because, Doug, here's the thing that breaks my heart. In Zephaniah 1.13, it says this, Therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink of the wine thereof. That's Zephaniah 1.13. So what I'm sharing tonight, from my perspective, is, is that the time of uh, looking for the white knight, to come in and rise up and save us is over. Again, because I live further in the future, not in the financial realm than V, but I live in, I would say, the end result. That's what's the hardest thing for people to grasp, but I understand it. And so many times have I pled with the Lord, God, can't I just go take pictures and just quit doing this? And he'll simply ask me this question, do you love me, Steve? 
Steve. I said, I love you, Lord, but your people are tough to love. Do you love me, Steve? I love you, Lord, but could you make your people a little easier to love? I love you, Lord, then feed my sheep. And so this is the thing, okay? We don't do what we want to do. We do what God calls us to do. And I'm not, I'm not bitter about it. I'm not kicking up or making a fuss. All I'm saying is this, is that it is imperative that people understand when they feel, or forgive me, when they fail to speak up, act up, and stand up for Jesus, the very words of Jesus will come to pass in their individual lives. This isn't a collective uh, uh, statement. Jesus said, if the salt loses its savor, it's henceforth good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men. Well, I could even put in modern terms, to be mowed down by AK-47s. You know, when the light that used to be set on the hill that everyone might look up, when that's allowed to dim, then everybody walks in darkness. They bounce off walls. And what we're doing now, ladies and gentlemen, if you listen to the mainstream network, you are like a, a tennis ball being, or even a racquetball going into a court at different angles and bouncing all over trying to get the truth. There is no truth. Every single network, every single network is bought, paid, and owned by the very Luciferians who are, are, are titillating you and are entertaining you and are perverting you through their horrific programming. It's all lies. That's why Jesus rightly spoke. And boy, if there's ever been a time, and maybe no other time in history, have the words of the, of the Son of God, the Savior of the world, come into such focus than literally at this time. Because again, Doug, people don't know the days we live in. Everybody thinks that they blink. If they put their fingers in their ears, they don't have to go on. I, I'll give you a good example. Uh, I have friends that, I actually have stockbroker friends that buy metals from me, even though their own companies would frown on it. That's why they come to me, because they could never even talk of such a thing. If you want, ladies and gentlemen, go on my website and read uh, King World News, the different interviews with everybody like uh, uh, Fleckenstein and, and Ergon von Geiritz and, and these different people, Eric Sprott. Uh, there's so many of them, but just here, these are billionaires. These are smart guys, Jimmy Rogers, telling you what the whole game is about. They all live out of this country now. And the point being is, is that we all can't leave. So we have to basically take our stand, but the only way any of us will be able to stand, I'm going to turn it over to V, is by standing with Jesus. When you choose to stand with Jesus, I'm talking only to the, the, the believers who are believers, followers of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. It's the only way you'll stand to stand now. If you think you can cower in the shadows, be quiet and use anonymous emails to me and say, don't use my name, I will just tell you this. Don't, don't even worry. I would never use your name. But your cowardice is going to kill you. I'm sorry. That's the bluntest way I know to be. When it comes to finances, if you believe that a piece of paper that exists in a computer that is nothing more than electrical impulses is going to be the same thing as something you can hold in your hand. If a guy's starving, he can have a billion-dollar portfolio, but if you give him the meal, that meal means more to him at that point in his life than his portfolio. I cannot even begin to tell you how, and V can tell you about this, and V, you should address this, the cyber plots, plans, and schemes, as your friend, your dear friend has told you, how much cyber attack and how it's going to be done. Because, look, it may still be a gradual thing, but when, when, when the lights turn on, the rats run for their holes. So the light's going to come on. It's God shining the light on it. Nobody else, Doug, nobody on talk radio said what I said. I'm just saying this. It wasn't, I'm not a prophet. I'm just a watchman. I'm saying this clearly, that before America is judged, you don't think America's being judged? then wait until you can no longer deny it. And the blood in the streets that's over there, there are entities, non-human entities, controlling human entities that have promised them a lie and, and, and untold riches and eternal life apart from Jesus and eternal perversion to their heart's content. And the those men and women in the Senate and Congress have already bought the lie. And so they don't understand that, that, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for somebody to represent you, no one can represent you better than the great intercessor, Jesus, before the throne of God. I got news for you. If you're looking for a man to save you, it ain't going to happen outside of Jesus. And it's the same thing in finances. Weak 
after a week or let's say every couple weeks when B comes on and shares with you the nature of what's going on in the world and in especially in the financial world if you stay in their arena you become lion fodder if you stay in paper you've got nothing I talked to a woman today she says you know we've got a portfolio blah 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 but we have nothing if the banks close we have nothing and and I've got to tell you again Husbands, listen to your wives. Please listen to your wives because women walk in an intuitive sense that men, because we know everything, and I say that, you know, mockingly. I mean, how many times have I been mistaken when I just should have taken the lead when, when my wife would say, there's something wrong with that guy? Well, the bottom line is you need to understand that women are designated as, as they're the nest builders. And, and if they're the ones that have to cook the soup when you come home from your stock brokerage job or work in the fields or a plumber, electrician, contractor, whatever, then they're naturally going to be thinking how to put meat on the table to take care of the family. And yet I see, I see kamikaze husbands basically saying, I'd rather go down with the ship than basically admit that my wife is right, or I'd rather hold on to a invisible photon then grab a piece of silver gold or even a turkey breast. Go ahead, B. Yeah, you know, I want everybody to imagine, if you will, um, an invading army, so to speak. And um, picture, if you will, you got this invasion force that's coming in, and we're all in a uh, in a camp, right? And uh, in the camp that we're all in, um, there is a fence uh, right around surrounding the camp protecting us, keeping what's outside out. You know, we have some guard towers up there. We've got, you know, some of the searchlights, you know, spotlights working. And we shine a light onto this invading army, and they just scurry back into the darkness. It's easy at this juncture right now that we're in to kind of, for us to rest on our laurels. Because, you know, one thing I said is that, you know, we got, we got them on their heels. We kind of slowed things down by the grace of excuse me, by the grace of God. So the human psyche is to say, okay, fine, the enemy's on the re retreat, let me just uh, rest and relax. One thing I want people to understand is, is they're not retreating. They're regrouping. And when I say that the, the decision is going to be between a, a fast, horrific collapse or a slow bleed, you've got to understand either choice is going to be very painful. I don't know all the details and how things will play out in terms of world events. It's impossible for any one person to know. But one thing I do know, irrespective of what path this country is going to go on, okay, whether it's the slow bleed where we die economically slowly and the bus slips slowly off the ledge into the precipice, or it's done quickly. The point is the system is done. Everything that you're used to doing in terms of uh, you know, your, your quality of life, your living standards, your purchasing power, the things you love to do, you know, you're watching football games on Sundays, you know, you're, you're, you're shopping, you know, you're hanging out with the buddies at, at, the, at the local bar. These things are going to change. They're, they're going to change forever. And when this country transitions from the current economic system into whatever it is that's going to happen, whatever it is that these guys are planning, it's not going to be good. There's going to be a lot of pain involved. Now, folks, I want you to understand one thing. In the Great Depression, in 29 after the crash, and on to through 33, you had the majority of Americans living in the countryside, living in farms. And they were, for the most part, self-sufficient. And they had a small percentage that lived in the cities, Boston, New York, Los Angeles, Philadelphia. Now, during that time where the majority were in the countryside and, the, and in the farms, 7 million people starved to death. Today, we have the complete inverse. We have the vast majority of people living in the cities, living in the suburbs surrounding the cities, and these are urban environments. And you have a small percentage in the countryside and in the, and in the farmland, and even smaller out of that is, is self-sufficient. 
when an economic disruption occurs, and I've talked to people who went through collapses, okay? Um, if JC, if you're listening, I mean, you, you know, I've spoken to this guy, survived the, uh, the, the, the economic collapse of Latvia after the Soviet Union fell. There are tremendous things that occur, tremendous hardships. And that is, we as people are not ready for, if you're not prepared for it individually, it's it, it, the, the, the kill ratio, folks, from every expert that I've spoken to, the kill ratio in a scenario like that in, in, in an urban environment is very high. You're talking about an 80%, 90% kill ratio because the people are just starving. People are killing each other for food. People are just out of sheer violence. So you have to be prepared. That's what this whole thing is about, you know? The thing is, the numbers, the only thing I can look at is the numbers. And the numbers say that an economic crash is inevitable. Folks, there's no, like I said before, there's no volume in the marketplace. There's no real profit being made. Everything is, because the Fed is printing so much, there's no proper valuation. And when you don't have a proper valuation, it throws everything off. It throws off your profit earnings. It throws off your price to book. It throws off every aspect, okay, um, of a company's earning reports. It throws everything off because you have this speculative bubble that you've based your whole company upon. So valuations are impossible. So never before has there been such a fog of war or a fog of financial war. And just because the enemy is no longer at the fence anymore doesn't mean that he's not watching us. It doesn't mean that they're not sitting back seeing how we respond, how we react. Are we going to go back to our football games and our beer and, and pizza and wings on Sundays? Are we going to go back to business as usual? Are we going to go back to uh, shopping? That's the dick. That, that's how they dictate. So when this holiday season rolls around, they look at you, and you're one of those, those fools standing online on Black Friday. And you're one of those guys, people that have to have the latest gadget and widget, the new iPhone 5S, and the S is for same, okay? If you're one of those people, the bankers know that for the most part, then you've, you, you've, uh, you've, you've, uh, reverted back into your old carnal shopping materialistic ways. And at that point, they'll strike. So just because we're winning it right now does not give us an excuse for us to rest on our laurels. It is a time for us to pray. Uh, it is a time for us to, to really weep for this country. It's a time for us to be active. It's a time for us to strike while the iron is hot and not give up. And now is not the time for us to, to back down, but to go all the way. That was a dramatic pause, V. Intentional. It, because people need to think about that. <laughs> Seriously. People, I, I, how many people do you think really understand the gravity of what you just said. Not, I, I don't you know, think that many. No, and you know what, Hart, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I called into the radio program uh, a little a little late, so I, I don't know exactly if you, if you gentlemen talked about it or not, but that young lady who was killed yesterday in D.C., have you guys talked about that? No, no. Uh, no, we need to talk about it tonight, V. Go ahead. You, you because to help. I yeah. was so disheartened. Okay, this is a young woman, 33, 34 years old. She had a 17 or 18 month old child in the back of her car. Let me tell you guys something. She's a dental hygienist. She's a professional. She earns a very good income. Her employers that she's worked for said that she's a stable individual, no problems, her friends, her families. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, I mean, I've, I've checked some of my sources and they they believe wholeheartedly this girl, this young lady panicked. She happened to take a wrong turn, wound up in an area. You had some of these trigger-happy, dumb punk cops who quickly just lifted up their, their Glock 
21s and the AR-15s directly in their face, the girl panicked and spread away. And what do they do? They pumped 17 rounds into her. Uh-huh. By the grace of God, that 18-month-old baby sitting in the back of that infinity. Okay, she wasn't driving some July. This is a professional woman. This could be your wife. This could be your girlfriend. This could be your wife. This is somebody's daughter. And that 34-year-old young lady gets shredded by a bunch of punk, trigger-happy cops. And that poor child, 18 months old, traumatized, screaming for her mother as the bullets rip through her flesh. Have we gone to the point that these cops are so idiotic and so brainwashed, these dumb punks, that they are so quick to pull a gun on a woman? They are so quick to, 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 to pump lead into a woman? This is the kind of, this is what we come to. And you know what? There's a, there's a lot of people in the Patriot community that have said that this action that has taken place with this young lady was crossing the line. That this is almost civil war-like. And I'm not advocating violence. And I thank God that there are good law enforcement police officers that are out there that are standing up for the Constitution. And I thank God to the sheriffs out there, and I had the blessing to talk to some of these guys who are out there standing up for God, standing up for this country, standing up for the Constitution. But the rest of you young punks who have a badge and a gun, you need to wake up and you need to figure out real quick whose side you want. Because that's uncalled for. Every single one of those punks should have been arrested and I'm, I saw the video. This, this guy takes his police cruiser out of nowhere, rams her car high speed, and they hit the barricade. And then the media says, oh, he's injured. Who cares? The girl's dead. And then what, within hours, the media is like, oh, she's crazy. She's postpartum. She's this, she's that. All sorts of allegations to cover it. And then what are these scumbag, pool boy, man whores, and paramours in Washington, D.C.? What do they do? They stood up as a standing ovation to the D.C. police. I wanted to throw up. This is how far we slipped. What the heck happened to us? What the heck happened? This, dude, am I living in North Korea? <sighs> I mean, that could have been somebody's wife. I mean, I want you, every, every man out there who's got some testosterone in his veins... Any, any, any father out there who's got some, who's red-blooded, red-blooded American, that could have been your daughter. That could have been your wife. That could have been your kid, your grandkid in the back seat. She wasn't some ghetto trash. She was an educated professional driving in infinity. Shredded. Unbelievable. That, to me, folks, was a symptom of a huge problem. You know, in New York, we've got police shootings all the time. You know, we had Amadou Diallo, 40 shots because the guy was reaching for his, uh, a, a wallet. You know, you hear stuff like this. But when you're freaking out a young woman, a woman is not, she doesn't have testosterone in her blood to to think clearly in a panic situation. A woman's instinct is to take her child and run. That's instinct. That's human nature. A man's instinct is to confront the threat. And so that, that poor woman, that young lady, acted on instinct. And every professional that I've talked to that has, that has commented about this said, V, that, guy, that woman, she was panicking. She was panicking. She was in a panic. You could see it. And in the panic, you don't think so. Can't imagine that. Imagine that now we're in a country where, you know, I got to worry about my wife. And other men who are red blood have to worry about their wives going out with their kids. And God forbid they take a wrong turn having some cops shoot at them. It's ridiculous. It is all orchestrated. Let me share this with everyone. 
one of the one of the and years ago, and I'm talking 20 years ago, and and points in between. I talked to a lot of former Soviet agents, former U.S. agents, and stuff, and they talked about this day in the future when law enforcement would be absolutely, if you will, uh, energized and have a get out of free jail card for cold blooded murder. I got news for you. A panicked mother is nothing for one of those testosterone guys to take down. I mean, one man could take her. When I say take her down, I mean restrain her. The fact that she was murdered in cold blood, let's call it what it is, ladies and gentlemen. In the streets of America, when you did not speak up, you Christian pukes in the pulpits, you silent devils that yield to the power of hell. And I'm standing by what I'm saying. And if you fit that category and you wear those shoes, then shame on you. Meow, meow, meow. And I'm constraining myself. I'm praying for that little girl, and I'd ask every intercessor to pray for the trauma that that little girl is going to experience because there's so much trauma now that her mind, it's not just one life destroyed. Ladies and gentlemen, you watch it. You watch cold-blooded murder and you sit on your dead posteriors, and don't give me that stuff. Look, we're on talk radio. Somebody says, what do you do? I, I've been fighting it for years. I do everything I can, and when the time comes, I'll do what I must. And I've prayed, and I've asked the Lord. I said, Lord, show, intervene, please, please, Lord, intervene. And at least, and, and I get this feeling in my spirit again, Doug. The Lord said, this is what what your nation has become, Steve. Your nation has become a, the streets are beginning to flow with blood. And I remember Mike McQuitty, God bless him. He and his wife were both killed in a car accident a number of years ago together. But he said, when the blood starts flowing, it won't stop. Let me say something, ladies and gentlemen. I used to scuba dive. I used to be just a fanatic about scuba diving. And I was in the water with sharks and all kinds of stuff. And uh, having ruptured my sinuses at about 90 feet off of Catalina and getting vertigo, when the, when the blood hits the water, you ought to see what shows up. Uh, and uh, thank the Lord, I'm still here to talk about it, but that really happened. And, and being, watching how the predators move in on the helpless, ladies and gentlemen, we have become a predatory nation. We have predators. They're consuming you. And anybody with children or grandchildren, I have five kids and I have, let's see, one, two, three, four grandchildren. And, gee, at 35, I feel really old. I'm just kidding. The bottom line is, is that what V said, that's, a, that's an intentional misdirection. What V said is so absolute on par. When you get all these guys standing up and, and clapping, listen, there's going to come a time, and I said this 22 years ago on talk radio, and Hawk could tell me but Hawk can tell me more about my first shows than I can remember, but I do remember saying this, and some of you who listen to me, Gary F. and others who started with me that, that many years ago, remember this, I said there will come a time when they will slaughter Christians in the arenas, and there will be coliseums, the bands will be playing on, the rock bands will be playing on, and... That's what it will come to in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants us to be victors, not victims. If you won't stand up, you're already a victim. You know why? Because you're terrified of the outcome. I can tell you your outcome is assured if you don't stand up. If you do stand up, you might find out that you taking a stand will cause A, B, and C to take stands. And same thing with the vets. How many of you guys, Navy SEALs out there listening, Spec Ops guys, 160th guys, all of those of you who have lost friends through the betrayal of the men ordering other men to their death, how many of your fellow believers and brothers have to be slaughtered and murdered before you say something or do something? And look, again, what I'm inciting people to is to pray, to intercede, to act up, speak up, and stand their ground with the power of the Almighty God. But if somebody comes at you to blow you away, make sure you're out of the holster before they are. I'm sorry. Because, ladies and gentlemen, you understand what V just said is so true. This is critical for tonight, Doug, because we're watching the slot.
Or we're watching little kids go into jail for, for making a gun out of what their index finger and their thumb yep. or painting guns. Yep. We're, we're seeing the most horrific vilification of every liberty and every virtue this nation ever had, past tense. It still exists in, in humans, or excuse me, individuals, but not in the country. And yet we say nothing, do nothing. I even know a guy, and I'm sorry if this steps on any toes, that would just like to go surf on the beach and wait for Jesus to come home, what a, or to take him home. What a, a pathetic excuse for a human being. And I'm sorry if I'm stepping on, on friendly territory, but it's true. How, how dare, it, the only reason, you know what, now I'm, getting, now I'm getting riled. The bottom line is this, there's a reason why there are so many amazing women of God, intercessors, is because there's so few men of God who are even uh, possessors of the truth once delivered by the faith of our fathers. Well, I, I am, I'm amazed, you know, and, and I don't, look, if you want to be on Facebook and think you're witnessing to people, and I'm not aiming this at you, Bob, or anybody that's on Facebook, Russ Dizda, or anything. But look, that's, that's, that's talk, and that's you know, presenting arguments to people who can no longer think logically is not winning souls to Jesus. You know, Jesus said, look, if you don't believe me for the words I say, then at least believe me for the works I do. Well, that just basically blasted out 20th century Christianity out of the arena, because most people don't even believe the power of God if they claim to be Christians. Now, I'm talking about the majority professing evangelicals. On this show, we speak to people who have a relationship with Jesus Christ all over the world. We're pleading with people to come into that secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91. We're asking people to come to that place where they realize that the Lord, the battle is the Lord's, and He will fight for them who speak up for Him. And as I've said it before, this is critical. This is, this is murder ink, ladies and gentlemen. Even the mafia wasn't that brazen. Even assassins usually don't do it in the open, unless they're blowing up a car or something. And yet now, ask yourself this. Ask yourself why, why the current slaughterhouse is funding rebels who eat the hearts out of people. Look, I write about Aztecs, Incas, and Mayans. I write about human sacrifice. I write about all the garbage and the gore and the horror uh, you know, of history. And yet we see it displayed on CNN, and we get some dumbass with the BBC wanting to understand what makes them think. I'll tell you, it's real easy. You, you, you know, it's called bloodlust. And we're watching people and hearing of people being dismembered and little babies having their heads cut off and mothers and husbands watching it, and the rape and the pillage and the plunder and those hypocritical female dogs in the women's movement, they're silent as women across the, the world are butchered and stoned and mutilated. And, you know, if that's offensive to some of you, then you need to be offended, because in, in essence, you would have been mad at Jesus for driving the money lenders out of the temple, because that's not a good Christian thing to do. I thank God for the men and women in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. Look, there should be a sign over believing fellowships. If you're a wimp, repent. Get right with Jesus and become a man if you're a man, or a woman, a woman of God. But quit abdicating to the devil. And this is why I, I tell uh, God bless guys like John Kyle and all of you who have deliverance ministries, and uh, Bruce Lee, Shannon Davis, those of you who are out there in the deliverance world, because that's the dirty laundry. Nobody wants the dirty laundry, okay? Everybody wants the Brioni Ascension robes because some uh, charlatan on TBN promises you that, you know, for so many dollars you can get an Ascension robe, I got news for you. When a person comes to know Jesus, they don't need anything word, uh, made for us by the world's best tailors or supposedly best tailors. They are clothed with the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we're told to put on the garment of praise. I got news for you. If you're miserable, naked, wretched, and poor, you need to go to the book of Revelation and find out who it is that you need to come into contact with Jesus and get right with God. Look, this thing is hideous. When the Christian church did not stand up against National De Defense Authorization in 1867, you signed your death warrant. When you don't speak out about the Second Amendment and those who will take it from you, those who will take your guns from you will turn those guns on you. 
when you won't stick up for the innocent, when you won't stick up for the helpless, when you won't stick up for the unborn, those very people that practice butchery without compassion will butcher you with glee. And the word butcher has come into a whole new meaning. So I'm saying this, and it's the same thing with, I'm going to say this, V, and then you can deal it, deal with it. The bottom line is, when it comes to your finances, Finances. You tell me why those of you who are Christians will put more trust in a stock brokerage or an account that you can't touch, that the system has to stay up on. We're getting ready for grid ex exercise, you know, in November. Uh, I talked to somebody today who basically gave me a cryptic email and said their insiders are telling them it's going down, meaning the grid. Look, if they just shut down the Internet for five days, can you imagine what they can do in those five days? And A, can't communicate with B, and Doug Hagman's show won't be on, and Steve Quinn website won't be up, and V won't be able to come on and tell you what's happened. See, that's the problem, V. It's, it's the stuff is upon us. We're in motion, but no one can come to the conclusion of what these events mean all taken together. And it's, it's probably, somebody says, well, you don't paint a very good picture. Uh, absolutely not. That's why I use the highest definition lens photographs I can because I want you to see, to come into focus. And in, in photography, there is a term called circles of confusion. To most people, that would sound like the average newspaper in a given day. But the circle of confusion basically is where the focus, the depth of field, in other words, there's not enough depth of field from point A to point B to be in sharp focus. So what's out of focus is confused. It's blurry, okay? Oh, that God would grant us a clear vision tonight. Oh, that God would grant you a clear understanding tonight. And that you would take hold. And, and I've talked, Doug and V, I've talked to people who've lost anywhere from 400K, 400,000 to multiple millions. And they shrug it off. They said, so how long are you going to work? the rest of my life, and I said, why? And in a couple cases, those people, I said, don't do it, 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 and I've talked to physicians, I said, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, and, you know, and I'm talking friends, yet they won't listen. So, ladies and gentlemen, remember this, it's no longer a, what is it, a bird in hand is better than two in the bush, you know, it's, it's, the fact is you have to think commodities, you have to think that freedom was a commodity. Freedom was something that everybody in the world used to admire. We used to have uh, a standing in the world. And when I said years ago that America will become a hissing sound in the nostrils of the people of the earth, that's already happening. We are held in contempt. Even Colombia and Ecuador know more about telling the truth than the United States does. Let me make it clear. If you believe that there's anything coming from truth out of any of the major networks or any of the major news sources, they're all owned and controlled by the same people. And you better well wake up. Amen. Cool. Steve, you have with that. Okay. Uh, sorry, V. We're up against the top of the hour break. Uh, we're going to take that break now. And just a couple more examples aside from that woman in, in D.C. There was a cop who shot a Texas homeowner after he killed an intruder. And earlier this week, also, a police officer fired uh, and shot a man during a traffic stop who did not pose a threat at all. These events continue to increase the lawlessness of the police, the militarization of the police, and the lack of accountability altogether is leading to a very bad situation, and it will only get worse. Folks, you're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this Friday, October 4th, 2013, with a very special guest, the Gorilla Economist, V and Steve Quill. So we'll be right back after these short messages. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Hi folks, Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and the Hagman Report or as our frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines, you just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched, and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's canadafreepress.com on the Internet. 
It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen johnson Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly, follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Hi, friends. If you are stumped. You don't know what kind of gift to give to a friend or a loved one. I'm telling you, you must go to 4physics.com. That's the numeral 4, P-H-Y-S-I-C-S dot com. This is your one-stop shopping palace. That's the only way I can put it. I could spend easily an hour on this website. Innovative, fun, educational. There are games, books, weather instruments, unique time-telling devices, jewelry, optical devices, laboratory equipment. Let me give you an example. We all know we can tell time. With a sundial, you've seen those advertised. Did you know that you could tell time by the stars? At 4physics.com. You can buy a Horologium Nocturnum. This was a navigational device used in the 15th century by time by the stars. It's beautifully crafted in the shape of a pendant, made of bronze and pewter or gold and silver. Absolutely a stunning gift. I would be proud to give it to anyone. You must go to 4physics.com. Even if you're not stumped, that's 4 physics. That's the numeral for P-H-Y-S-I-C-S dot com. It's your one-stop shopping palace. Any problems that you have, I don't know what to get, Grandpa. I don't know, I don't know what to get my loved one that's unique. You will find it at 4physics.com. Please take my word for it. Go to the website, but give yourself a lot of time because you're not going to want to leave. 4physics.com You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, listeners from coast to coast, all across the world, to a very special Friday edition of the Hagman and the Hagman Report. With us tonight, Mr. Steve Quayle, uh, brother in Christ, uh, the founder of stevequayle.com. Uh, folks, bookmark stevequayle.com. So many important stories there, so many important aspects of that website. I just love, by the way, Steve, you are wonderful. <laughs> you rusted chicken. What a fantastic photograph. The, the photos of the day are, are, are worth the price of admission there. Uh, and obviously, uh, of course, we're they also talking with, uh, yeah, and we're talking with uh, V, the guerrilla economist, the man behind the website Rogue Money. Dot net. That's roguemoney.net. Uh, v, the gorilla economist. Uh, folks, I, I don't think there's anything more sobering to, than, than what we're talking about today. Uh, uh, gentlemen, welcome back. I'm going to turn it to Steve. Uh, go ahead and continue with your Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you. Uh, v, if you feel, I, I, wanna, I, I kind of feel a direction here. Don't, don't tell the name, but you have a certain friend that's a very, he's a genius when it comes to computers, and that's by world standards, not just by guys that don't know much about computers, but guys who are recognized as being at the top, what, one hundredth of a percent of smartness, that's just the way I'm saying it. Tell people how much cyber financial crimes go on in a day that they'll never admit to. Tell people how real it is. And, and, and here's a question for you. Am I kidding when I say literally overnight everyone's accounts can be emptied? Forget reverse hypothecation or reverse interest. Am I in any way, based on what you know, over-amplifying that threat? No, you're not over-amplifying that threat one bit. 
And, uh, you know, I, I will tell people this. I mean, the, the gentleman that uh, Steve and I are, are uh, we, we talk about is, uh, you know, his, um, I mean, he goes by the name of, uh, I, mean, his, I can't give you his real name, but his nom de plume, so to speak, is, uh, is uh, Michael Arevna. And um, his website is actually the uh, sister website uh, to, uh, re- to uh, roguemoney.net. And his website is actually a free website. It's called uh, Revelation Now. Uh, dot net, and uh, this is a gentleman who's worked uh, in some of the top uh, banks, investment banks, banks in the world. In the world. When, I say, when I say top, top, uh, he is a genius at developing anti-money laundering software. Uh, he is a genius in understanding uh, banking software, and he is an absolute brilliant mind in engineering network structures, uh, setting up banking algorithms. And, and all sorts of customized programs that, to this day, investment banks are using his stuff. That's how good he is. The number of cyber crimes that occur is tremendous. The number of hacks that are trying to that are that are stopped at the firewall, or some that even pe- uh, that penetrate the firewall, is not only a great amount, but it's becoming much more and more. Um, and more sophisticated. Uh, folks, we're getting to the point where, you know, one of the things that I was uh, warning about is a Stuxnet-like virus that's been geared and prepped for uh, the, the financial world. That's been geared and prepped for uh, basically attacking for, um, the virus that's generated and designed specifically for taking out banking computers. Uh, banks... Okay, like you go to Wall Street, uh, most of most of Wall Street banks, they have their money, um, you know, all their banks, all their servers. Let's say it's in Manhattan, the servers will be in New Jersey or in Pennsylvania. They're underground. Uh, there are multiple servers. There are what's called load-bearing servers, and this is what uh, Michael Revna explained to me. They're load-bearing servers. So if one server goes down, there's a backup server that kicks in. The problems have become so profound that load-bearing servers are being affected. It's becoming so profound found that that's where you're starting to get all these glitches uh, with online banking. Um, number one, number two, with uh, the uh, just the data wire, the fiber optic data wire, uh, wires with ATMs, and that's on the Cisco network. That's on the NYSE, the NYCE network, uh, the Discover network, uh, the various networks that run ATM wires and have that integrated with individual commercial banks, these are being affected. So you have this huge banking you know, network problem. And one of the things that people have to understand is that we have a solvency issue where there's no money in the banks. That doesn't help the problem either. That actually exacerbates the electronic issues as well. So, uh, you, you, folks, it, 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 is, it is a very, very critical situation that we are that we are in and i believe wholeheartedly you cannot keep you know all your money in the bank for um much longer i, I think you know, though, if you haven't gotten all your money out of the banks yet you know the window of opportunity for you to do that is uh, becoming less and less so you know i am concerned about grid x and uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, they're they're talking about taking down the grid. They're talking about simulating a, a takedown, but the grid will still be up. You know, whatever the case, whatever the case may be, usually, and one of the things I always worry about, it's usually in these drills, in these multiple drills that are that are occurring, the actual event takes place within the drill itself. Itself. So those who are in the drill um, think that it's just a drill and they don't realize they're actually really being attacked or there's a real attack going through. So these are the things that we must be keen upon, you know, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm very concerned about that, yes. Well, Doug, one of the things that I'm concerned with, again, is the fact that we're so also dependent, and, you know, you can read one second after and the different people you've had on your show, and they've all talked about that. I think one of the things that's so amazing to me is a disconnect between 9-11 and airplanes being flown by remote controls, so to speak, versus the cars being taken over, i.e. Hastings, being the fact that everything in a total information awareness. Here, here's the greatest disconnect I know. The idea that, that everything we say, obviously this broadcast, I can't even imagine how many pages 
of uh, radio broadcast, nine, ten thousand hours must be in some electronic file someplace. And yet, people still go on and play on. Uh, let me give you an example. The new iPhones, whatever the number is, and the fingerprint technology. Just anything that's using biometric scanning and identification. It was bad enough people wouldn't listen to me about Facebook and Twitter and I said you're building basically self-erecting uh, intelligence dossiers. People wouldn't believe me and before Alex talked about it, I'm not saying whoopee for me, I'm just saying. I was, I was in the know on Marcus Wolf, the former head of the Stasi and Yevgeny Primakov, former head of the KGB for the Middle East, when they were being paid by, in those days, FEMA to set up all the plans and and, and things going on in this country for basically total control. Let me make it clear. Total information awareness is total people control. And we just had what, Doug, the revelation. I mean, you're an investigator. Doesn't it even surprise you at how fast these guys are building matrices of everything that every person you interact with, have telephone calls with, everything, everything, everything. And so the thing that's fascinating to me is the great disconnect because it's like the band plays on. When V said something in the opening show that's really critical, or the opening of the show, this is all absolutely planned. If you see any glitches, those glitches, I've been told this, you think, Steve, every glitch has 100 counter moves, okay? Remember, we're up against supercomputers. We're up against a diabolical supernatural mind that the mind of man cannot compete with. That's why, that's why Jesus, again, I'm bringing it back to Jesus. Jesus, when he said that he'll give us the words to speak, that we don't have to worry about them when we're brought before men or entities to give account. But when I get people always asking me about giants, well, the giants, flee in Jesus name and it's people usually who are asking me those questions that have zero authority or have never even cast out a demon and as a general told me actually three different generals on three different times and a colonel who it cost him his life to fight some of these things Colonel H and, and those of you who are MMVs and mighty women of valor know exactly who I'm talking about but but I asked him I I asked the same question he says Steve we use the name of Jesus and we're all believers in every configuration in every scripture, he said, we still have to fight. And that's what I think that people don't, don't recognize. Sure, Paul could have used the name of Jesus, 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 and he did many times. Yet he still basically had a sword. And Paul, the guy who used the name of Jesus, talking about fighting with robbers, okay? Well, ladies and gentlemen, what you're up against is something so sinister, yet what God has given you is victory. But that victory has to be obtained first on your knees and through revelation. It's one thing to, to quote the scripture that uh, Jesus has given, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And then you go and see the new uh, uh, hornets in in China that look like, to me, they're genetically altered, that when they sting these guys, it looks like a gunshot because it's flesh-eating. To my knowledge, and I went back and searched, I haven't done a complete search on it, I'm, I'll use the hornets and the genetic alteration of something I'm working on now, but the bottom line is everything, everything is, scaling is scaling up. You know, it's funny, Doug, we were talking, I think it was Augusto and I were talking about uh, the fallen angels. Now, why is it important I bring this up? It's really critical for you to understand in Mexico and in Ensenada, there are people who are interviewing people that are seeing the comets, if you will, falling straight down perpendicular and literally disappearing uh, uh, before they hit the ground. Or in a couple cases, actually, I think about a half a dozen cases or more, they see an entity, a human body, usually big, with bat-like wings, and then those things disappear. The Word of God tells it that the angels, the fallen angels, can even come across as ministers of light. In other words, in other words they, they can be seductive. They can be deceptive. And if we won't even... Here's my question before the Lord. If, I say, Lord, if we won't even acknowledge what we can see, and we know that we know that we know, even if we deny it, if we won't acknowledge what we hear... How, Lord, are you going to get, this is my question to the Lord, how are you going to get your people to recognize the relevance and the reality of this stuff? Because, God, they're not even dealing with what they can see at this point and what they hear at this point. A good example of what they hear at this point are all the strange sounds. 
you can only dismiss foghorns in the middle of, uh, or a ship's foghorn in the middle of a landlocked country for so long, or in the mountains of Colorado for so long. Something obviously is happening. And while some of it may be methane through wellheads, uh, you know, it's not all of it. What would people think if the very fabric of what they knew as reality was being so torn apart that even, if you will, the sound spectrum is undergoing great stress? And that there's a scripture for that, that it says that literally all creation groans for the matter of the manifestation of the sons of God. Even creation on a subatomic level knows that this ain't right. And I'm using the word ain't. I know that that's not a correct term, but I'm using it for effect. This ain't right what's going on. And so what, what V and I are trying to do is give you a composite overview. When we tell you you're at risk, we're also giving the antidote for that risk. When we tell you're in danger, we're giving you a way out. When we tell you financially, look, here's the thing. We, when we start talking about Cyprus, and I don't know how long ago that was, V, what was it, six months when you first, was it back in May when you came on first? I think it was uh, back in March or something, you started talking okay. about Cyprus. Well, whenever, March. and we were telling everybody, and then people said, gee, he really knows what he's talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, you better listen to him, because again, we, we can't tell you the day and the hour. And by the way, I want everyone to hear this from me. I will not allow any more postings on dreams and visions that have a date. I will not allow any postings from anybody who set a date and was wrong. Because, again, I, I've got to make this clear, everybody. The Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. But the prophecy is uh, the gift of prophecy or a prophecy is not a false prophet. It can be a false prophecy. But the point is, is that if somebody... somebody he said the Lord showed him this and it doesn't happen, then obviously the Lord didn't show it to him. So the point is, is that I, I'm, I and I thank, and I, thank, you know, I thank the Lord, Lord for this. Because, because, because again, I, I try to the best of my ability to be discerning. And, and somebody says, well, why are you the sole judge? I said, because I've told everybody that uh, you need to go to the Lord. And I had a bunch of people say, thank you for posting that, Steve. And how is it that people don't even want to practice their own discernment on an individual level? It's because L-A-Z-Y. It's because you want someone to tell you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And then when we tell you that in the financial realm, we're saying we want you to become, quote, get your goods in your own hands so you can be a faithful steward. It's amazing, isn't it, that Christians will quote the parable of the dollars, not understanding they're about gold and silver. They'll talk about Jesus, and they forget he had to flee for his life into Egypt, and the angel told him that. Why couldn't God just keep him alive and whack Herod? I don't know, but he could have, but yet he sent Mary, the mother of Jesus, Joseph, her husband, and Jesus into Egypt. They lived on gold, frankincense, and myrrh, the most three valuable substances in the world at that time. Funny how gold is still that, and the frankincense and myrrh, pure frankincense and myrrh, are still incredibly expensive. There are spices that cost more than gold per ounce. So the, the point is, is that we're in a position now to try and warn and warn and warn. And it seems like, B, with every warning comes more scorning. With every absolute in-your-face event happening, the, it, there's a corollary to that. To the degree that the event is so in-your-face, the denial will absolutely increase in disproportion to the event. Doug, does that make sense to you? Oh, absolutely. People, you know, like Joe, Joe, you just talked about the incident in, in, in Houston. There's a hundred of those incidents, probably a thousand of those incidents. And the bottom line is who's holding them accountable? You see, here, I'm going to make it easy for everybody, okay? The bottom line, and I'm using that over and over and over, that means you cut through all the garbage on top. Where do you stand? The bottom line is, is that if you're a Christian, if you are a prepper, if you If you are a veteran, if you are a Second Amendment person, if you are a Constitution, the whole list in the MIAC report, which Alex Jones did a brilliant job on, give credit to whom credit's due, honor to whom honor's due, the bottom line is, is that everybody other than them is a target. Everybody other than them is a target. And so, you know, how should we then live? I don't know if any of you have ever had someone out to kill you. I have. 
Uh, it's not embellishment. It's not my imagination. Heck, I've even had people brag on forums how easy it would have been to kill me. Uh, you know, and that guy was supposedly a Christian. But the point being is that the thing is, is you develop a sense. You know when you're being scoped. And, you know, you just have that uneasy feeling. I don't know if it's an electromagnetic uh, projection or whatever, but there, there's something. And you've got to develop that in the spiritual realm. It's not called paranoia. It's not called fear. And it's not called apprehension. Spiritual discernment is a gift of the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And it's something that I believe all of us need to have. And I, I just said to the Lord one night, I said, Lord, my discernment in some areas really is pathetic. Help me. And he said a wonderful thing to me back, and, and I'm just telling you, he said, spend more time in prayer and your discernment will increase proportionally. Isn't that cool, Doug? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, that, that's what we need to do. You know, I mean, that, that's, yeah, exactly. We have to spend yeah, more you know, time in prayer. God, Jesus never asked us to charge windmills, okay? You know, you're not Doug Quixote. You're not Joe <laughs> Quixote. You're not V Quixote, and I'm certainly not Steve Quixote. You know, you know, you know, you know. You know and we're not, uh, we're not, uh, you know, basically on some cosmic journey to uh, be Walter Mitty's. But we have to do what God has called us to do. And so again, V, I don't know how many different emails you get in a day and and phone calls and stuff, but it's like there there's a paralysis. Let me ask you this. In the financial realm and even the big guys you've dealt with, do they not use that uncertainty and paralysis and the average Joe investor to just bloody well pick their pockets and fleece them? Absolutely. Um, one thing is, thing is see, the, see the smart money never starts trading early in the morning. All right, the smart money, what, we, what they do is we, we usually wait. And uh, we wait until the market is about to close. We make about five to six to maybe seven strategic plays and get out. You see, so the suckers always rush in. You know, there's that old saying, fools rush in. And um, that's exactly what happens every day. You got these young traders, you got amateurs that start their trades early in the morning and, you know, they go through the afternoon, they go through the dips, they make a couple of losses, a few gains, but more loss than anything else. And uh, that's their day after their day. They repeat that day after day, you know. So that's, uh, you know, that's pretty much how the market is. And we use uncertainty, fear, and trepidation. We leverage that to our advantage. That's exactly how we, how we did it. Like when I would trade strategic metals, I looked for opportunities. I looked for opportunities. When the market was up, I made money. When the market was down, I made money. We make money on the way up. We make money on the way down, irrespective. So any sort of uh, situation that would arise, any sort of situation that would create tumult, confusion, uncertainty, these are things that we use to our leverage. And, and we would, look, it is dog eat dog out there. It is kill or be killed. So those who are the weaker would always get eaten by the stronger. And that's how it was. And your ruthlessness is something that was rewarded. Okay? You, you don't make it big in, in, in trade um, because you, you played it soft and conservative. Now, you played hardball. You know, most of the guys that, uh, that I've worked with when I was trading, these guys are killers. When I talk about killers, I'm talking about they're going to go out and kill somebody. But their mentality is ruthless. It is a game. It, they get high off of it. I can't begin to tell you. In the, uh, in the conference room, watching motivation, getting pumped up. I mean, we'd watch everything. Uh, we'd get pumped up on Rocky music. We'd watch the speech from Rudy, you know. Did and, you watch uh, Wall Street? I got I to ask you that. Did you watch Wall Street with Michael Douglas there? Uh, oh, absolutely. Okay. I, absolutely. With Gordon Gecko. <laughs> I saw the first, the first one I loved. Uh, the second one was not that bad either. Not that either, either but the first, the first one is where it's at. That's where you want to be. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. These are the things that we'd watch. Uh, boiler room, okay, with uh, Giovanni Ribisi and Vin Diesel. That's another one. These were these were always on heavy rotation at the office, at the firm, so to speak. So we get all pumped up, and then we hit the floor with our headsets. And the thing that we'd always say to each other is, it's either kill or be killed. You either the hunter or the hunted, and we go out there and we slaughter. And that's the mentality. So all this weak, flimsy, limp-wristed stuff, we love it. We love when we encounter stuff like that. 
You know, so that's that's how the market plays. Now, it, you know, in terms of emails, emails, folks, I probably get over a thousand emails a week. Just and I read just about every single one of them. You know, as much as I can. And um, you know, some people always ask me, "Well, you know, you said about October. What about this? What about that?" Folks, you cannot. Nobody could peg an exact time frame. And the reason why nobody could peg an exact time frame is that just like in a war, a battlefield, okay, the situation on a battlefield is always changing minute by minute by minute. So when you have a battle plan, oftentimes you have to have to plan the plan. You see, the long term, you know, I have the long term strategy for anybody to survive what is to come. Okay, there is a long term strategy. You can contact me on roguemoney.net or girleconomist.com. I'm sorry, girleconomist at gmail.com. Uh, if you need medals, you can get a hold of Steve at stevequell.com. So we have the long term strategies, all right? But it's the short term nuances that are going to be changing here and there. And you've got to make appropriate moves so that in the long run, you're not left holding the bag. In the long run, you're not, you're not going to have the rug pulled from underneath you. Uh, my only question, V, is, um, uh, you, you know, uh, I, I've got $100,000. Uh, should I just leave it in my 401k? Uh, no, I, I'm <laughs> Doug, I promise you, I could come through the phone lines right now and shake you, brother. Uh, I will well, come well, through and shake you. I know, uh, I know you're baiting, you know. <laughs> no, I know. But, 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 but see, that is, and, and it, of course, that's untrue. I, I don't have $100,000 or a 401k, but isn't that the mentality, though, uh, of the majority of people who are out there? It just, it's that adherence to this normalcy bias, uh, that, 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 that things are, are, are okay, and it's just, everything is not okay. We're not even playing in the same field as we were 10 years ago, in my view. Is, is that kind of an accurate statement? Yeah, absolutely. We're not even, uh, you know, look, 9-11, as horrific as it was, and how it ratcheted up the police state, and how it really began to clamp down on American freedoms, that was just uh, the kickoff. See, we, we, we saw the, uh, that, that was preseason, okay? That was pre, for all you football fans out there, you want some analogies, I'm going to give it to you. That was preseason, okay? Now we're in the playoffs, all right? And now, I mean, things in the last five years, folks, it has changed drastically. And now what's happening is anybody that's on the playing field right now is playing for keeps. Okay, there's no mercy, there's no surrender, it is, it, is, it, is, it is all or nothing. So you either have skin in the game, and you say to yourself, hey man, you know, I only got a thousand bucks in my bank account, you know, what should I do? I do, get food. All I got is ten thousand dollars in my bank account, what do I do? Get food and get some, get, get some silver. Now, if you're sitting in there on some substantial portfolio, you're thinking you're fine because you got, you know, 100,000 in ETF over there. You got 1.25 million uh, sitting in a bond over there, and you got the, you're crazy. Okay, we are witnessing the largest transfer of wealth in the history of humankind. Okay, these guys allowed the baby, baby boomers to develop and create as much wealth as possible. It was the richest generation in the history of the world. Is the baby boomers in America? And now their wealth, everything they've built up, okay, which is the equivalent of three generations of wealth, is now being wiped out by stockbrokers. And they're doing it legally. You know, I, said, I said earlier um, that bank profits were at pretty much zero, okay, and that they're, all they're doing is they're paying off their dividends, they're doing dividend buybacks, stock buybacks, and, and you know, paying off their shareholders. All right, so in other words, they're robbing you blind. See, the banks are beholden to the taxpayers, supposedly, because of all the bailouts and TARP and things of that sort. But now we're seeing that instead of being beholden to the taxpayer, they're beholden to their private investors. All right? This is robbery. It's illegal. These guys need to be thrown in jail. And they do it brazenly and blatantly because they think they're better than you. Okay? So, you know, it's time. It's time. If you're gonna, if you're sitting on the fence now, you, you know you need to get off the fence. You need to decide what you want to do. Either you know you go off quietly into the night, 
you know, go into your basement and eat cat food and wait for a SWAT team to come through your door, or you get, or you put on, you, you, you know, you put on your face paint, you get some skin in the game, and you begin to start making preparations for you, for your family, to protect your loved ones, to protect what you have, to protect your wealth. The days of sitting in your hands, the set days of sitting idle is over. It's far over. Okay, it's it's it's, it's the playoffs. All right, and there's going to be a Super Bowl. There's going to be a, a, a championship game that's going to be being played very soon, and it's going to be between those who are awake and those who are wanting to destroy and, 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 and subjugate humanity. Those are the two teams that are going to this, this, this championship game. Everybody else is just asleep. Everybody exactly. else is either spectator. And in this game, the spectator dies. Exactly, and and you, I don't think I well you can't really get much plainer than that. Earlier this week, I think it was you and I spoke uh, uh, by telephone about uh, what happened in Panama. Panama's economy, I mean, it's 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 pretty close. Or the, the, their system of their system, their economy is pretty close, pretty close to America. Uh, Absolutely. What happened in Panama? Exactly. Great question. Great question, folks. This is a, this is a, this is another red flag. If uh, Y'all don't get it. This is another red flag here. Panama is a dollarized country, kind of like Costa Rica. I mean, they got their own little currency that they really don't use, but the predominant currency of choice over there is the U.S. dollar. Okay. Panama has a great deal of expats, right? And um, I have some boots on the ground at Panama contacts over there. Uh, Glenn, if you're listening, God bless you, brother. Um, the thing is this: most of the expats have their funds in HSBC, Bank of America. Uh, they had their funds with, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, subsidiaries of American banks and banks that are over there. So this makes it easy for them. To, and, 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 and the currency convert and make it easy for them to get their dollars out. Uh, Banco Nacional de Panama, which uh, is the bank that went into that little blank holiday, and there was also some banking disruptions with the other state-owned banks. It's simply this: the bank was running out of money. They just didn't have any dollars. Okay, remember, folks what I said, you are, you would be shocked. And I said this a while ago, you'd be shocked to find out how many banks are actually, are actually going to the federal reserve window, which is basically a window that if you're a bank that you go borrow money from in order to cover your operating expenses. Okay. Now, typically if a bank goes to the fed and says, Hey, you know what? Uh, we need a uh, $500 million to cover for this week or this, you know, the next two or three weeks, you know, okay, that's understandable. Okay, we get it. Okay, $500 million is going to be covered for, uh, you know, a couple of weeks or a few months. Okay, we get it. But when you have banks that are so broke that they got to go to the Fed window and borrow $10,000, you got a problem. Folks, what you have here, now people talk about, oh, the credit bubble, the credit bubble, the credit bubble. The credit bubble exists in Western banking, and the, and the derivative bubble exists in Western banking simply because there's a huge black hole, and that's called the Solvency crisis. Banks simply don't have money, and that is the reason why the Banco de uh, uh, Panama, the National de Panama, you know, shut down uh, from uh, from uh, September 27th through October 1st. They had no funds. Okay, they're back open. Guess what they did? They actually went, put out a request to the Fed Reserve window. The Fed actually funded them some dollars. Okay, that's what happened in the back end. That's your. Oh, by the way, that's your taxpayer money, folks. I just wanted to let you know that. But that's what happened in Panama. Uh, and we have this solvency crisis occurring, and and, and, and all, all of this, you know, these banking shutdowns, these these, uh, these 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 online glitches, all these things at the bottom of it is a solvency issue, major solvency problem. We're broke, and we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. It's it's, it's even worse than worse than that. And Steve, you're the one originally, uh, and and this was I remember, uh, I don't know, two three years ago talking about this very issue and at the time when you mentioned uh, banks not having money I thought that's almost impossible I couldn't conceive of that and yet you know when when I go into my local bank and I I chat with the the branch manager um, they tell me well that we we need to keep the money in circulation so we don't have a lot of money here at the bank uh, it's just, it's crazy. I never thought it would, you know, it would come to this. And, and I think most, 
people of reasonable sense of sensibilities who, who thought, who believed in the system, who bought the lie, are, are of a similar mindset. Well, absolutely, because, again, it used to be that a bank had to have a certain percentage of their deposits in the house. And they had to have what were called reserves. Then several years ago, the Fed lowered the reserve requirements. And so, you know, let's just take a, let's take a good-sized bank, half a, half, let's say a half a billion-dollar bank, uh, customers' deposits. Now, remember, that money is no longer yours. You're basically now, due to the change in language, you're an unsecured lender, where before you were a secured depositor. See how that works, Doug? And it would be hard pressed to guess. And, and listen, I, I have banker friends all over the country, and I say, and I say tell, tell me what your total till cash is and bank fall cash is. And I, I'll tell you what, very seldom is it over 100K, and I'm talking about a $500 million bank. Wow. What they do is they know how many checks are cashing with their depositors. They know how many people are depositing. I mean, it's, it's a science, okay? And the reason the Fed wants them to, do, to uh, you, know, you know, give them their excess cash is that's the way the Fed controls the amount of liquidity. Or a better word, and actually, V was the one that brought this point up, that it didn't dawn on most of the big-name writers in the financial world. It's a question of solvency. It doesn't matter if you've got, quote, a... Uh, 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 good night. A balance sheet with five million bucks. If you can't touch any of it, it doesn't matter if you have a hundred thousand dollars in your IRA, KEO, four hundred one k, or you know uh, whatever def uh, deferred benefit plan. Look, ladies and gentlemen, you really think that that money that you think is yours hasn't already been pledged? Sixteen point seven trillion dollars, quote around sixteen nineteen trillion in all the deferred and defined benefit plans. And isn't that strange that that's exactly what our debt is? And then don't you find it even more curious that the true debt of this country right now is $220 trillion? And that's not calling derivatives. I remember, Doug, when I said this, and I got, I got ridiculed. I'd say the highest level of ridicule, and my answer to my ridiculers was, listen, you guys can't count to a trillion. I can. But when I said that the derivatives was a quadrillion-dollar problem, it was before anybody, and I mean anybody, said that. Said that. And, they thought, and they thought, I think, I was smoking wacky tobacco or something or, you know, high on uh, sterno. <laughs> but the bottom line is it was the Holy Ghost. It was the power of God's calling in my life to give me insight. Look. I stumble over my feet, but when God says, Steve, warn my people, look, it's not, you don't have to be a prophet, but what you have to do is be obedient. And I get emails all day long, and, and, and they say, what do I have to do to do what you do? And I say, please, don't do it, because it'll make you crazy. I said, do what God calls you to do, but don't think for any minute that you can step into this arena, because I'm just simply saying this. There are hundreds, if not thousands of people interceding for me daily to bring the word of the Lord. And they're relating to the giftings of God in my life. This is not me. Hey, if I were to judge myself, I'd say I'm a pretty cracked uh, piece of pottery. Yet it's the water to a thirsty man, even anything that will hold a little water. And I've learned a long time ago, my strength and my purpose in life is to be obedient to Jesus. Look, I'm 62, and, and I know I harp on that a long time. And I told one guy the other day, he was older than I was, I said, I got you beat by three. I said, I'm 186, and he broke me back an email and said, well, you look pretty good on Prophecy and News for 186. I said, because I lived at three times the speed of life. People that know me know that's not an exaggeration. Uh, I, 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 I was... I was so driven, when I say driven, I was so, I was so focused on doing what I did. And believe me, uh, and I, I'm sorry to say this, but if there was a, a limit that could be broken, I would break it in speed. If there were airplanes to be flown, I would make sure that, and I don't fly anymore. I quit years ago because somebody with, uh, you know, supposedly mostly ADD or whatever I, you know, people think I have. You know, my wife thinks I have it, and I go this, I go, well, listen, my brain just fires faster than most people. And the bottom line is, is that yeah, I always, it had to be fast. So what I've had to learn is to slow down because, and people have been, you know, helpful in that telling me, slow down, Steve, you're talking too fast, you're covering too much territory. But what I'm trying to share with people tonight is, look, 
the night really does come when no man can work. And Pastor Langford and I will be on, and we'll be serving communion on Hagman and Hagman Sunday night. And David has a powerful message. And those nights are for the things of God specifically. But there's no separating, Doug. You see, if the parable of the ten talents, the parable, the parable of the ten virgins, and notice it's always half and half, That's you know? Right. It's sure. always half and half. And it's the midnight hour. And, and we're right there, right now. And, and again, we can't lose track of the fact that children are being gunned down, that the elderly are being gunned down, down, down. That, that, uh, that moms, professional women, you know, and, and, and I, I absolutely was heartbroken. My, my breath was taken away, and I just started to tear up. And I said, it's come, hasn't it, Lord? It's here now. So when I make statements of blood's going to run the streets, remember this, ladies and gentlemen, I made that statement 20 years ago. When I made the statement that everything you denied, you denied your brethren worldwide, when you didn't stick up for them, and it goes to the same thing in prison. We're commanded to remember our brethren that are in prison, because if these guys... have their way. If you live, you go to prison. What, what most people cannot understand, Mystery Babylon is judged by the living God for trafficking in men's souls. Every single human being has a price on their, on their head of slave labor. When Pastor David Langford and others said, we have been in captivity, now we're going to bondage. If you don't like the word bondage, let me, let me just make it easy for you. Remove from the United States, take into countries yet unknown to you, and you will be slaves the rest of your lives. And, and I'm, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about something that breaks my heart. And I say to the Lord... I say, God, give me one more day. And when I come on, Hagman and Hagman, I'll tell you what my prayer is, Doug, every time. God, make me clear. Keep me from being biting with my tongue. Help me just to speak what you speak. And obviously, obviously, I'm still working on a quote, or God's still working on me, and I'm working on issues. But the point is, is that the passion in me is the pleadings of God with a nation. The, the Lord calls judgment his, his strange work, his peculiar work. And that word, by the way, even, even has, to, it has in one variation in Strong's Concordance, it, it, it's the same word. word for Nephilim. So it's pretty hard to get people to understand that, that we've got these issues facing us, and then I need to, by the grace of God, take you into the next battle arena, and that's all the stuff that I've been writing about. And again, when I'm dealing with people who, who and God bless you, Pastor John and Billings, God, God bless you, when I'm dealing with sisters in the Lord that are having such demonic manifestations, and Bigfoot, and portals opening, and the most extreme, uh, what I call spiritual, or physio-spiritual trauma. And I'm telling you what, at that point, it's the blood of Jesus, it's the power of the Holy Ghost, and it's the faith. And I just bless John, Kyle, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank those of you who are fearless in the face of hell. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have a pastor, pastor that's fearless in the face of hell, I can give you the names of some that are worthy of your support because I believe that the workman is worthy of his hire. And thank each and every one of you that's listened to this program. That's helped Brother Bruce. That's helped Brother Langford. That's helped Pastor Kyle. That's helped Brother Marcus. God bless you, Barbara Kay, and your generosity. God bless you, Lisa M., and your generosity. God bless you, J.D. and J.P., in your generosity. God bless each and every one of you. And I don't know all the names and initials, but I'm just saying this. These are brothers and sisters who absolutely live to give. God bless you, Cornelius. Man, Cornelius II, I nicknamed him that because he stepped right up to the pump. And you'd want him in the arena with you. Trust me, you'd want him. And plus, he knows how to drive fast, okay? And if, if somebody's a 55-mile-an-hour guy or a 60-mile-an-hour guy, or worse, a 30-mile-an-hour guy in a 60 zone in a Subaru, he better speed it up, pick it up, and maybe get a different vehicle. <laughs> Absolutely. I had to get that in. Wow. I dealt with the 30 mile an hour on 19th, you know, and, and then they, they want to make sure they give you the single finger salute <laughs> if you pass them because you want to do 40. Or yeah. 50. Or, or, or twice that. Um, v, yeah. v, I've, I've got a question for you here, because this is something that, that uh, I, I saw on your website, and, and we were 
Uh, you had mentioned this. What happens? In fact, um, I think on Zero Hedge, uh, there might have been a, a question about this. What happens on... Uh, well, I, I guess the date is selected is October 17th. What if the Treasury were to go over beyond that date where it can't honor all of its payments without the debt ceiling being raised? What happens? The uh, Well, if that ever happens, then you have a real uh, shutdown. Um, uh, you know, we have a, a special cadre of, of idiots not just not just your run the million years some of this special no, these are special these are oh, they're so special a very special idiots and and um you know these are morons who haven't passed a budget in in, in five years it, it, it's unbelievable so right exactly. you know if it goes to october 17th and uh you know I've I've you know gotten the answers from very very top levels that you know that they're not that they're not gonna you know do it. But if it does, you know, then you have a, a shutdown. You know, then you have the post office. Then you have all sorts of essential services will stop. You, you food stamps, your well. Welfare checks, your social security checks, all of that all of that would stop. Would stop. And. Uh, you know that at that point it'll be it'll be chaos. But at that point, now the question that the banksters fear and that what's being kicked around in their circles is, you know, do we, uh, you know, part of my friends, do we piss off the populace to the point that we show up at their doorsteps with pitchforks, forks, and and, and torches? Uh, because uh, that is a that is a situation that can happen. Now, you know, there's all sorts of uh, variables, and some would say, well, you know, you got a police force in place. I mean, look. look These cops can't shoot if their life depends on it. It's surprising they can hit a mailbox at 25 feet, most of them. So, you know, the thing is, it's, it's you know, if, you know, the, that debt ceiling is not raised uh, and we hit it, then basically you're talking about a complete shutdown of the government. You're talking about a complete shutdown of the Treasury. At that point, all, all, all pretty much uh, all economic activity stops. And uh, that's the that, that situation. Can they just freeze the clock like they did last time, the, the debt clock, for what was it, 100 days? The debt did not rise? Yeah. yeah, they uh, froze the debt clock. If you want to see the debt clock tick, you can go to roguemoney.net. I have a, a debt clock that's ticking. I don't know it doesn't show the actual $225 trillion that we owe, but you know, it, it is ticking. Just make um, sure you have a white screen, uh, white screen white water, 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 because you're going to need it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly, but um, you know that's what these uh the but you also have to understand this whole debt ceiling thing is just uh it's 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 just uh it, it's just namesake, okay? Uh, also, in the sense that nobody had no nobody either in the Republicans or the Democrats uh, have any intention of 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 reducing the debt. Okay, so that's so this, again, folks, this is political theater, and I'll tell you why. Why would these these putrefied cadre of idiots in the in the Republicrat and Democan wings of of, of, of of globalism and banking incorporated? Why would why would these guys vote to defund themselves? Why would they you know vote to stop all their pet projects and all their pork barrel spending? Okay, this is on both sides. When Obama, I think it was uh, I, I don't remember which. Which bill it was that was passed? I mean, somebody, some some congressman from the South, who was a Republican, allocated two hundred and fifty million dollars uh, pork barrel spending spend for NASCAR. Okay, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that goes on. These guys are not going to decide and vote to defund themselves. No, 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 they love it. It's a drug to them. It's like quantitative easing to the to the to the, you know to the stock market. They they just want more of it. So the debt ceiling will be raised. All right, and and I have it from the top board. Even guys like you know Bill Gross. Uh, over at Timco said that you know we're gonna you are gonna make sure that it, it's going to be raised, um, you know.
and, 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 the, and the desire right now is just to get rid of the debt ceiling altogether and have us print and hyperinflate to oblivion. You know, but um, wow. I, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not worried about October 17th. Okay. I'm not worried about it. In fact, you know, I just got, I just got an email from uh, uh, one of my guys. His name is uh, JC. And uh, JC, he was, um, you know, he lived through the Soviet Union collapse, and he was over in Latvia. And, uh, you know, he, he knows how to, you know, you know survive. survive a collapse. Uh, the man's in an engineering background. Brilliant man. He's, I think he studied in Oxford. I'm not exactly sure. But very... brilliant individual um and uh he actually said that if they do a grid x and steve will probably comment on this if you do a grid x and they actually take down the whole entire you know power grid you know then you have a uh disruption of communication, communication where the only people that do have communication and coordination is uh, basically the foreign occupiers at that point and that's another plausible mm. scenario you know i'm not trying to fear monger or anything like that but it's just a uh, you know something to think about wow Steve, what's your take on on this uh, grid X uh, situation? Well, we know from past experiences and past extra extra. Exercises and uh, again, if you want to go on and just Google Operation Black Jack, we know that every single exercise. And by the way, that woman was murdered during during an exercise in Washington D.C. Something bad always happens, and people die when, quote, they claim it's an exercise. Remember this, an exercise is just another word for putting more draconian people-killing ability in place. That's my statement. So the point is, as I, 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 they say, never let a good, uh, uh, what is it, uh, never let a problem go to waste, you know, or something. Uh, never let a catastrophe go to waste. So they will... Will use it to their benefit. And first of all, James Sinclair made the statement: it's quantitative easing to the end. There is no end of it, and that's how they're going to destroy the dollar. The dollar. I did have somebody uh, send me an email, and they had a dream, and there's no date on it. But they woke up one night, and the next day, uh, the dollar had been literally cut in half, and they saw the value of a dollar going to, I think, either 40 or 50 cents. Well, you know, this is what people don't understand. In order to get the Chinese to buy our debt, everything in America has been sold. Our technology, our landmarks, our natural resources have been sold because of people that have loaned us their fruit of their labor, let's face it, whether it's slave labor or not, ever, they intend to make good their investment. I can tell you point blank that the Chinese are some of the wisest, some of the smartest, some of the most inventive people in history, and if you don't believe me, just Google Chinese inventions. You'll come up with things like everything from the toothbrush, the seismograph, earthquake monitoring, monitoring equipment, and also toilet paper, okay? And let's say, ladies and gentlemen, how about that infamous thing known as gunpowder? Ladies and gentlemen, we have right now, and this is what I'm trying to tell you, we have nothing but a lap. an L-A-T-T-I-C-E left of what once was a great nation. Someone says, you don't sound like you love America, leave it. I love the America that was. I detest, abhor, and want to vomit the America that is. You saw the America that is when that mother was gunned down those so many times. My guess is even the number, the number of bullets had significance to the aluminous. If, you know, Doug, it's like this. We're trying to save people's lives. You can hate us. You can discount us. You can basically gripe. You can use the other word for a female dog at us. But that doesn't alleviate the fact that you have been told the truth. And you can say, well, it just because it's because it's... I had one guy, you know, I, you know, I quit talking to him, I blocked him, but he used to just tell me basically go F myself because life is good for him and that's all he cares about. My last response was, I think even, uh, by, wait until it isn't. Wait until it isn't. Because then, when you could have made a difference, this is what I want to leave before we get the next break, the more people we help on this side of eternity, the more people that will make it into eternity. And I got news for you, that's the number one principle of God's gospel. When the Pope said what he said, he basically contradicted Jesus, called Jesus a liar, and don't get mad at me, Catholics. Listen to what the guy is saying. He basically abrogated the great...
commission. Go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples in my name. My name. And the thing, and the is, thing is, is that, uh, you know, when he's talking about the exclusivity of, of Christianity not being any longer necessity, that's a denial of faith. And the war that's coming to the Catholic Church, I told about it 22 years ago, you can laugh. It's now at the doorsteps to your cathedrals. Doug, we better take a break. Yeah, we're going to go to that break. And you're right, Steve. Not only did the Pope... Um, you know, remove Jesus from any part of salvation. He also said, you don't need you know, God, God to be saved. You need to follow your own conscience, and if you don't, that is the greatest sin. Uh, very sad. And, and I also saw today numbers that uh, 60, upwards of 60-some percent of the Catholics are supporting this Pope and, and what he's doing and saying, and it's, and it's troublesome to see that. Folks, you're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this Friday edition with V, the guerrilla economist, and Steve Quayle from stevequayle.com. We'll be right back after these short messages for the third and final hour, so don't go anywhere. To all our listeners tonight, folks, Doug Hagman, Doug Hagman here for American Survival Wholesale. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. They've got a fantastic special. I just want to tell you about this. They've got an, Octo an October Hagman and Hagman special. It's on their website. Go to AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Click on the store icon and scroll down. It's about halfway down. It's in the center. It's the October Hagman special, food, water, and stove. Now, now here's the deal. Really, you, you get this. this you You get it, you get it all. It's it's and I was talking to the owner from American Survival Wholesale about this and about some uh, about, about the well just about the issues that would face us should we need to prepare food and eat the food and the circumstances and uh, he came up with this wonderful package. Here's the deal: you you can you can get or you will get. Uh, two months of of Linden Farms delicious emergency food, plus a a uh, 100, 100 five year emergency water pouches. In other words, 100 pouches of water which lasts for five years. And by the way, if you store water. You know, you've got to maintain that. You've got to rotate it. Well, these pouches are less for five years. Uh, so, so once again, you get you get you get two months of Linden Farms. It's a Cadillac of, of food, by the way. Uh, delicious emergency food. 100 five-year emergency water pouches plus one of the best single burner camp stoves that have that has ever been tested by the, by American Survival Wholesale. It features an 8,000 BTU burner. It's matchless ignition. It's got a fully adjustable heat uh, control dial. Porcelain drip tray for easily easy cleanup for uh, klutzes like me it includes a handy storage case, storage case. it's uh, lightweight it's compact and it's butane powered now for the first first 50 orders folks the the last special they had they sold out of everything within uh, i don't know it was record time so, but for the first 50 orders, American Survival Wholesale will double the water to 200 pouches. And have, by the way, they're, they're going to offer free shipping. And have you ever tried to lift 100 pouches of water, a box of water? It's, it's pretty doggone heavy. So the shipping alone, the savings on that is incredible. So, so you're, you're getting well over uh, $1,025 worth of merchandise, including... food, water, and something to cook it on. Well over that amount, uh, not even including the shipping, for $720. You cannot beat it. I recommend this deal to everybody. This is a well-thought-out package because I'll tell you something. something. Uh, the food that you have doesn't really taste all that great without the water, and certainly it tastes a whole lot better when it's warmed up. So just think about that. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Take advantage of the, spe the special right now because the first 50 orders, they will Will double your water storage. That's the first 50 only. That's American Survival Wholesale.com.
American Survival Zone.com. Tell them Doug and Joe sent you. Survival of the fittest. In any and all situations, survival is your number one priority. That requires being tough and thinking smart. And the folks at Freeze Dry Guy are going to help you do just that. They have a long range patrol ration entree. They call the Brick Pack. When you're in survival mode, it is absolutely the best item for your survival pack or bug out bag. You can go farther, faster, and carry more food with the LRP cold weather ration entrees. Not only do these long-lasting, durable entrees help sustain you or your family through the harshest environment or situation, they are by far the most delicious of their of their kind. No. Contest. Can't beat the LRP brick packs. Let Freeze Dry Guy help you your survival situations. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com. Or, or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our third and final hour. Actually, we've got about uh, 45 minutes or so of this hour left, of this program left. I want to thank, thank uh, Steve Quayle for being a very stand-up guy, telling it like it is, and for being uh, uh, my friend for as long as he has, putting up with my amateurish questions at times. And just thank you, Steve. And, and V, we've only known each other since the beginning of the year, I believe. I want to thank you, too, for... Uh, you know, on, on the on the golf links, or in my case, in my case, putt, 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 I don't know, but 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 certainly you could be out with your family and 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 doing other things. But but here you are warning people about what's to come, and I just want to say thank you so much for that, both of you gentlemen. Oh, but one more thing before we get back to Stephen and V, folks, uh, unprecedented in in. Uh, our programming history. We're going to do a Saturday program tomorrow, beginning at six Eastern time, six p.m. Eastern time. Uh, an intelligence insider, really, an, an insider's insider. This is we talk about preparation. Well, he's going to be on. Um, Yoda is going to be giving uh, the second installment, actually, actually uh, uh, a larger installment of preparation, of, of prepping for what's to come, how to handle yourself. So that's at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. Check out HomelandSecurityUS.com first thing in the morning for details on that. You don't want to miss it. It's, it's, uh, it the, the information you'll, you'll derive from that is worth uh, the price that you'll pay to listen to it. I mean, I'll tell you what, seriously, it's, it's worth... Uh, uh, it's very valuable, especially coming from this gentleman with respect to his, his knowledge and experience. But back to V and Steve. Thanks for holding on. Steve, I'm going to turn it back to you, my friend. You take it uh, to where we need to go. Well, I think and, and where we need to go is get people to understand that in the last, let's just say, last week, they've seen absolute denial of the root problem is we're not living within our means, that the money being spent, what was it, this administration spent more money in the time it's been in office than uh, all the presidents from Washington forward. It's not, it's not lost, Doug, on the rest of the world that our days are numbered. Who would have ever thought that the United States would be hiring Russian mercenaries? Let's just face it, that's what they are. that are here, the, that you'd hear of stories where people are literally looking at their property they're going to move into in some of the prime neighborhoods of the United States. I've talked to people in Seattle, Beverly Hills, I've talked to people in Vancouver, I've talked to people all up and down the coast, both coasts, and they're all saying the same thing. It's like, it's like tour buses, and this is one lady's exact statement, is tour buses of people getting out, and she said, these are not people that are vagrants. They're designer handbags, they're fancy shoes, 
and they're taking pictures with their cameras, and one was even so bold to go up and ask the woman, I believe, in the D.C. area, Washington, D.C. Now, obviously, if D.C. gets totally toasted, they may not want, you know, fallout acres, but the point being is, is that when I make statements like that, there are all those who live in denial. And for those of you that still don't get it, you will go to bed on a Friday night. Maybe it's a Monday night, Tuesday. My guess Friday, because that's the plan. There will be a signal given. That will be in a nanosecond. It will all, all be computerized. All the back doors. Listen, every financial transaction you make, every check you write, every, every credit card bill you take or, or make or buy with a credit card, every time you fill up in gas, everything is designed to know your every move. or older that doesn't have all the electronic stuff. And the point that people have got to understand, they're putting too much time and effort into their warnings about grid access. Uh, the thing is, visa are available for a short amount of time. When I say the short amount of time, I don't have a time. I know everybody, see, can I ask, this is a, this is a rhetorical question. Let's say, let's say a voice from heaven said, and because none of us will trust anything now except the voice from heaven, the point being is, is, let's say the voice of heaven, and it's genuinely God, says you've got 72 hours. Ask yourself what you'd... ...do in those 72 hours. I believe God is so merciful, so just, so long-suffering, so, long so amazing. His mercy is new every morning that he's given us space to repent. He's giving us space to seek him. And, you know, I tell people all the time, you'll get what you believe. If you don't believe God will deliver you, then you'll probably go to heaven early. If you believe God will deliver you, as a believer now, then he'll deliver you because you have not because you ask not. I think the day of taking Jesus' word so carelessly, so carefree, so religiously, or so kind of what I call lip servicely, I don't know how to say that, but that's the way I would say, I would say it, is over. Discussing this one on Sunday night, but just as a as a, a taster, have you un, can you even begin to imagine your own lives what that means? And and just even today, Doug, well, people knowing because of the announcement on your website and me linking to it, etc., that V and I would be on. That even schools now that are going to be locking down the kids and not allowing the parents to know where they're taken have been given specific trunk T R U N K E D special radios, and in those schools. Shortly before, and I don't know if it's a day, an hour, or they're already there, but people will be moved in to completely control the teachers, the uh, hierarchy, the super. Etc. And those kids, once they're out of your possession, they become the property of the state. Do you think that these kids don't have a future of slavery? slavery? Oh, they'll take the best for what they want them for. But any parent, knowing what they know, being targeted. I even got an email from law enforcement in Pennsylvania. A guy said, believe me, Steve, we know what's going on. And it's talking specifically about the kids being taken out of the schools. Well, you know, when I used to have a friend named Jack Bowles, marvelous guy. But he, also, he, also, he said this, and, and I don't even know if he's still alive. He moved to another state. But he said that people will have the greatest, greatest wake-up call when they understand the degree that they've destroyed their children's lives. by sending them to public school. I say this, I make no apologies for it. The people I respect most in the earth are homeschoolers. And by the way, if you're a homeschooler, a homeschooler mom, and you want to read my book, uh, a homeschooler dad, single mom, single dad, husband, wife, doesn't matter, you want to send me an email, you say homeschooler, schooler, and in please and clear conscience, be a homeschooler, I'll gladly give you my book. You know, I only give away one free because I, I, you know, I give away so many now, and I've just got to make sure I can get everybody covered. But I'll give the book of your choice to you. And I, I can say this, Doug. I have dealt with some homeschool kids. Robbie, God bless you for raising your kids the way you have. I have dealt with some of the most amazing
you can talk to six-year-olds. And, and believe me, I'd rather talk to a six-year-old that's open to Jesus than a 60-year-old that basically uh, the old wise eyes get his burst and I guess their intestines are on the floor. I'm not being gross, but that's the only way I can describe it. So, ladies and gentlemen, while you have time, ask yourself this tonight. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? And for those of you that think you're going to be uh, fleeing for your life, I recommend, and I still do, the stories, the dreams, and visions of people that have come to the United States from other parts of the world that are in their 70s and 80s talk about being able to get out, to bribe. And that doesn't mean... Everybody will be able to bribe. And somebody says, oh, Christian, oh, yes, it is. You don't know what Jesus, what, uh, what uh, Mary and Joseph had to go through to get into Egypt. You don't know what taxes they had to pay. And by the way, all taxes is a bribe to keep you out of uh, the hands of the long arm of the law. So any of you that want to get a hold of me, I suggest you just contact him this week on the email. And he'll give that when I turn it back over to him, which I'm going to do right away. And if any of you want to talk to me and you're serious, and please, I will not answer one question. Here's what I, I haven't made clear. IRAs, 401Ks that are put into metals cannot be held in your own hands. People say, well, uh, if I buy gold and silver, they're going to confiscate it. Well, yeah, but they're coming for your life, so you ought to maybe put a priority on being able to protect your life, protect your family, feed your family, feed your life. Now, those of you that don't have the money to buy metals, here's what I tell everybody. I've never changed this statement. Food, 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 food first. First, you'll be starved into submission. Somebody says, there's a law against that. There's a law against you living, breathing, continuing on in your life. You've got to understand that God gave you life. And the Word of God says that Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Well, I understand there are brethren in North Korea, North Korea who are... prison camps. I understand there are Christians who are imprisoned all over the world. I understand the Christians that are being slaughtered. And so those of you that are in a position that need advice, okay, call V. For those of you that want to buy the medals, call me and, the, and, and or not call me, forgive me, send me an email, steve777 at stevequail.com. I had a talk with, with you know, my right-hand guy today. Or we actually have the talk every day, and we look at each other and we ask the question, how much longer? How much longer? And he's, a, he's an astute brother in the Lord, knows the scripture. But again, Doug, the thing is, is that I want everybody to ask themselves just that question, that question tonight. If God himself were to speak that you only have 72 hours, and I'm not doing that because of a 72-hour emergency kit. Someone says, well, how long should I plan for? Six months. Absolutely. And if the grid goes down, that, that's the minimum, okay? Yep, yep. And, and don't keep all your eggs in one basket. I mean, distribute your supplies so if you can't get to point A, you can always go to point B. If A and B are cut off, you go to point C. The bottom line, bottom line is have a plan. And by the way, Doug, next week I think we're going to be bringing on, with your permission, uh, the guys from Full Spectrum Survival. They're the guys that do the two-minute news. Yep. They've got a project that's amazing. They're two really talented guys. They walk the walk, they talk the talk, and they're putting out, uh, I would say, the coolest survival videos with live action showing the types of situation. In other words, it's kind of like a... Kind of like a all those things, but there's so many functional survival tips on what you can eat and where you can eat it. So uh, the full spectrum, uh, Brad and Mike of Full Spectrum Survival are going to come on, and, and these guys know what they're talking about, and they've got an amazing thing I told them both tonight, tonight on the uh, telephone before going on your show. I said, you better make haste, you guys, because this is no longer on your time frame. This is on the countdown timer. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, if you are totally invested in paper, you used to, we used to mock the, the Russians saying the ruble was no good for, except for toilet paper. Now the Russians have one of the second largest gold hoards in the world. And by the way, it came out on... Uh,
King World News. It's on my website. That for it knocks, knocks all of the gold, all $231 billion of it is leased. That means somebody else owns it. It's not in the possession yeah, of I, Fort Knox. I, Steve, I've, I've, got, I've got information that uh, there's really no, there's nothing of value at Fort Knox. So the gold is gone, and it was gone since Oh, yeah, I, I just said it. There's nothing there. Okay. There's nothing there. So uh, anybody that wants to call our bluff, Doug, they, yeah. there's nothing. You see, that's what I'm saying. There's nothing there. I mean, it's we're not all gone from leased. I mean, I mean not, not, no gold, no precious anything there. Or, right. okay. Leasing, when you lease gold, you take it in your possession. Okay? Oh, I, I, okay. So now I, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much done with my, you know, send me an email. And when you send me an email, tell me what. This. There is no safe way to move into metals for independent storage. That independent storage, you really think the government doesn't know everybody in the country that's got their money stored with XYZ company? You know? Remember, when it's, when it's in your hands, you own it and you can hide it. And uh, you'd right. be surprised what an ounce of gold or one of those little pieces of one gram bar from a 50 gram bar of Alcambies. Whoever designed that product was a genius because they knew what the future holds. And so you can just send me an email, Steve777 at Steve Quail, and I'll get a hold of you on the weekend. Because again, look, I hope we have time. It's like it's Augusto, like Augusto said. Augusto Perez, you said we don't have a lot of time, we have a little time, but what people don't understand, and even the smartest guys from Sprott and all of these guys, they're out there on the gold, the gold, no, the day comes when it doesn't matter if you finally get it and want it, you can't get it, get it now and get it while you can, and again, uh, V said an important thing, I've had people get mad because they bought silver higher and now it's lower, but guess what, you've got it. And, and there's an $80 million lawsuit against a guy that used to be on, on uh, talk radio and basically uh, wasn't delivering gold over and, over and silver for a year. Or it doesn't matter if XYZ in, in a mint in... in The, the metals market is ripe with that. With that. My, my goal is to get it into your hands. Once in a while, we have screw-ups. Screw-ups meaning it takes a week. It takes two weeks where it should take overnight in gold and one week with silver. But those are rare. And, 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 and I'm worried, the most I'm worried about, is when the shutdown finally happens, whether it's grid X or whatever down, your shot at getting anything, whether it's food, food whether it's metals, whether it's water purifiers, what, a, what you name it, okay, it's over. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've got a little bit of time. It's still, the night hasn't come, but we're approaching midnight. V, you can go ahead and take it, brother. I'm pretty much done. Yeah, V, I... I Before you take it, uh, I, I've got a lightning round series of questions when you're ready for them. Uh, these are questions I call a lightning round that would require just short answers. But uh, go ahead, uh, sure. um, go ahead with, uh, with what you want to lead out with. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things I always say is, uh, is the fluctuations in the price of gold and silver. So it's really not, and I need, I need people to get this in their heads, it's really not the fluctuation of the actual price of the metal. The fluctuation is never in the metal. The fluctuation is in the currency. Understand that, okay? The fluctuation in the price of gold and silver and platinum and palladium is not in the metal. It's in the currency. Um, you know, uh, in terms of... Uh, ...leasing gold. Uh, you know, give you a perfect example. Recently, you know, one of the articles I put, put up about the BRICS uh, India leased about uh, 200 or 270 metric tons of gold uh, from the Bank of England. And all that is is just basically a, 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 a checkbook entry. So that's it. It's just a balance book entry. No metal actually left the Bank of England and was shipped over to India. Never happened. That's the essence of, of, uh, of, of leasing in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the financial world. So when the Fed leases their gold out into, let's say, uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, nothing leaves the vault. It's just an entry made in the book <laughs> with the full faith that the Fed actually has the goal. So when they leased out the gold in the federal... In, in, in 
Fort Knox. Gold is all gone. There's no gold in Fort Knox, right? Fort Knox has never been audited, and, and every attempt to have it audited has been stonewalled, okay? So there's no gold in Fort Knox. So when they lease out the $234 um, billion dollars in, in, in gold, they're not, it's just checkbook entries. So what, what a bank does is they'll take that checkbook entry, and they'll shop it around to investors saying, oh, we back up this investment with X amount of gold. Meanwhile, the bank doesn't have the gold. And then the, and, and, and the bullion bank doesn't have the gold. And the issuer doesn't have the gold. There's no gold. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's insane. It, it, it's all... I mean, it's like all of us sitting around having dinner, and I'm, and I'm writing IOUs to all you guys, and you guys think I'm some sort of wealthy, rich guy, and uh, you start passing out my IOUs, okay, thinking that it has value. But in reality, is I'm broke. I don't have it. So it's the same situation. There's no gold. All people are like, oh, you know, the, the bullion banking banks, they're, you know, they're long on gold. They're leasing all their gold now. It, it's a joke, okay? There's no gold there to be leased. It's, it, it's gone. The physical is gone. It's just a paper entry with a full faith that this issuer of the gold actually has the gold that they're issuing. So that's the uh, charade on, um, on, on banking and how it works. I mean, it's, 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 you see, the, 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 the whole system is just, it, it's, a, it's a fantasy. For a lunatic. Only a madman will come up with, a, with an idea like this and call it reputable and, and honest. Okay. Exactly. Either you're a madman or you're a con man, and I can honestly say the evidence shows that these aren't madmen; these are con men. Wow, and and they are exactly that. Um, all right, Via, I've got, I've got a, a number of questions here. I'm going to start with a couple of vague ones first, and then we can uh, work uh, toward the more specific ones. Sure. Um, what would you consider the? Uh, what's a serious? What would you consider to be a serious silver stacker? I mean, what's a serious amount of silver to have um, for the average family? And I say average, meaning just you know, wife, couple kids. Yeah. Uh, in the middle class. What would be described as a middle class family? Uh, I, I believe I know what stacker. You know, stacker. Yeah. How many ounces you need? You yeah. I mean, what would you? Say. Yeah. What would you consider a serious, uh, a good serious amount to start with? For a middle class family, um, you know, somebody who just pays their bills, uh, you know, lives paycheck to paycheck, has a little bit of money at the end of the month to uh, go out to dinner or you know uh, do something on the weekend with the, uh, you know, the kids. Uh, somebody like that, you know, uh, apart from their food shortage, right. uh, I'd say about about, about a thousand ounces, you know, is is, is good. Okay. You know, it's you know that's, that's that's two monster boxes. You know, that's okay. about uh, that has a value of about twenty thousand dollars. All right. You know, that, That, that's what I would say is a, is a good amount, and that's something you can you know build up to uh, over time. Uh, that's that's that's, you know, that's a pretty good situation. Now, you know you got to understand silver is very heavy. Uh, I talked to one of my clients today. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I, I find that have eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand ounces of silver. So you can imagine how many thousands of pounds of weight it is to move this kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's also a logistical factor to silver. Whereas you can take three million dollars worth of gold and you can put it in a shoebox. I cannot even fathom trying to move three million dollars worth of silver. It's oh my god, so it's a, it's a nightmare. Wow. Okay. But uh, but sure somebody with, let's say, <laughs> let's just say you got you know you got ten thousand dollars just lying around and all your bills are paid, you're financially well off, you're okay, you got, okay. You got ten thousand dollars or so lying around. I'd go out and get at least five hundred ounces. This is silver, you know. I'll get a monster box. Five hundred bucks. It's five hundred ounces. Get a monster box. At least get a monster box. Okay. And, uh, you know, keep it with you. All right. Yeah, the, the, I think last week was the first, or two weeks ago was the first time I ever heard of a, a monster box of silver. Okay. Um, can, can you explain how hey, many? Doug, let yeah. me explain what, Doug, let me explain what a monster box is. Okay. That's a term used specifically for silver eagles uh, put out by the U.S. Mint. Okay. 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 That's what they're called. They come in a green plastic box. Those usually run $2 an ounce more than the same ounce of silver, which is a silver round. A silver round is a one-ounce silver coin the size of a silver dollar. Every ounce has to say one ounce on it and has to have
a difference doesn't make uh, – you can spend two bucks more, but you're not going to sell something that's worth uh, today, let's say, $26, $27 for a buck just because it says $1 legal tender. <laughs> so the point is, is if you're planning on that, what V said is, is good. I just want to correct the terminology. It's just, it's like, just like junk silver. The word junk silver doesn't mean it's not good silver. It just means it's prior to 1964 and earlier, dimes, quarters, and halves, not nickels. Dimes, quarters, and halves, that's called 90%. There's 715 ounces in a bag. A bag is, in, for instance, if you've got a junk bag of halves, you'd have 2,000 half, halves. Or 1,000 phase. If you've got a junk bag in quarters, it's 4,000 quarters. And today you're looking at about you know, somewhere around 20 times phase. So that means a half dollar is worth 10 bucks and a quarter is worth 5 bucks and a dime is worth 2 bucks. So, you know, those are the standard ways that people buy silver. I will say this, that having been in the market for three decades and being, a, you know, obviously not only a dealer, but a, I, I trade my own account, uh, the bottom line means is that I've seen the premium or the lack of availability on junk bags is probably the best, if you will, anecdotal uh, sign, sign that silver is drying up. And the point is, is that with all the suits going on and people, I mean, I get calls every day, and my answer to those people, I said, why did you call me first? Two hundred bucks, and he basically, yeah, no, this is a real case. I'm not making this up, okay? Or, or the person that's uh, got two hundred thousand with a Colorado dealer, and now they're in a class action shoot because they can't get it, and they waited like six months to even make a noise. Wow! You know, ladies and gentlemen, if the dealer can't deliver, it goes for me. They, they, you got, you've got to get it in a reasonable amount of time. And, and like I say, there are the occasional glitches, but in gold, I ship gold overnight. Now, on weekends, it can't go out until the following thing. And when the, the suppliers get jammed up, it's interesting. Here's a phenomenon. People don't buy when gold or silver sells off. They only wait until it's setting. A, a, they'll buy more. Let's say. a day versus moves fifty dollars down a day they'll buy more gold at fifty dollars up a day than they will at down a day if silver goes up uh, uh, let's just say a dollar fifty they'll buy more when it's going up and they'll buy less when it's going down but here's what B's point is and here's the deal the manipulation and price has nothing to do with the availability because gold and silver are priced in every currency of the world and in some places the premium to get gold and silver is no pun intended but astronomical because again India can try and keep its people from buying gold they just go into silver. Ultimately, the Chinese are the smartest people in the world. Not only they're letting uh, the, the floodgates free, and I mean this, they are the smartest people in the world. To my knowledge, I don't know if Russia's got the same. Got the same. So, so the point is, is you've got the two largest gold possessors in the world. You've got the two major military powers in the world. And by the way, if you think America's numero uno, you're grossly mistaken. And then, V, the last thing I'm going to say is when the Chinese successfully did their ASAT, which stands ASAT, that stands for anti-satellite weapon, okay, ASAT weaponry, and were able to capture live satellites, that's the number one thing you watch as a defense, as a defense analyst. analyst because when they grab the satellites, and they can do it now, that means that they've already anticipated they will make their move on C3, command, control, and communication. And if I were people in the Pentagon... I quit being worried about uh, the American citizen who still believes in the Constitution, the living God, and the Bill of Rights, and be more focused on guys that uh, basically, to the degree you think you outgun the American citizens, wait until you see what they got planned for you. And for those of you training, to those of you in the military, training with all these foreign forces, keep in mind, keep in mind when, when, when God brings judgment, 
you think they'll be on your side, they'll turn on you. They will absolutely take you down. And, and as proof of that, two guys, I think in Georgia or Alabama, were watching a joint uh, mission between Russians and uh, U.S. soldiers. And it may have been Georgia or Alabama. But one of them called me, and his friend spoke perfect uh, Russian. And when the U.S. soldiers that were training with the Russians went away, the, the, the Russians broke in. And the, by the way, they speak. what we're going to do to them once we have we have done to the others what they're hired for. And they're all trying to be buddy-buddy, and these guys were openly talking in Russian about how they're going to whack their U.S. counterparts. Now, for those of you listening into this, that goes for you. It doesn't matter how many stars. It doesn't matter how many stripes. It doesn't matter. They are going to do it. And, and you can say, that guy's crazy, but I'm telling you, Doug, You've got too many in incidents, and we've got too many incidents coming in where that stuff is being spread. And by the way, some of them are so open, they're openly saying that. You see, you see America. America is dumb unto death. We're going to, we've sown to the wind, now we're going to uh, reap the whirlwind. Go ahead, V. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, They're going to stick to, uh, you know, at least have, we'll say have a few months worth of money in a bank or credit union. Any difference between the two banks uh, banks versus credit unions? No, there's no difference whatsoever. They, they, it, all, it all runs on the same wires. Okay, all uh, right. So it doesn't matter if it's a credit union or a bank. It's all runs on the same wire, same system. All right. Now, this is an interesting question here uh, from Butch from Doylestown, Pennsylvania, writes, uh, during uh, the government shutdown, or if, or if we reach that October 17th date, wh whatever happens then, what happens to the bank's ability to be lent overnight funds? the government has no relationship. The Fed is operable right now. I mean, today uh, we spent about $65 billion while the government is quote-unquote shut down. So uh, the thing is, is the Fed will continue to function. Uh, so, but, you know, that being said, you know, the disruptions will be in essential government services, food stamps, welfare checks, social security checks, uh, which is enough to create enough disruptions. Uh, where, uh, you know, you can create a, a, a good amount of civil havoc mm. at that wow. point. Okay. It, wow. All right. Um, it, here's an inter interesting question. I don't think I've ever heard either one of you uh, talk about this. Diamonds, especially diamonds, are, are are they a good protection of wealth? Uh, with with precious stones, um, I mean they, they they can be emeralds, rubies, um, diamonds. I, I I don't care for. I really don't. It's it's, it's look, diamonds are a joke. Right? And, and anybody listening to me, I'll explain to you. Diamonds. Okay, I can take you to when I was doing strategic metals. Right, and in that we were, you know, extracting some of our mines from from uh, Zimbabwe, which is formerly known as Rhodesia. And um, you know, there are mines, and you know, diamond mines, and it's made of carbon. Mm -hmm. I can take a stick of peanut butter and put it into a high-pressure press and provide enough heat and pressure, and I can turn my stick of peanut butter into a beautiful diamond, okay? The thing with diamonds is that it's artificial scarcity. De Beers owns most of the mines, all right? So uh, if De Beers opened up their diamond mines tomorrow, uh, broken glass will have more value than a diamond because that's the reality of diamonds. Right. Wow. Uh, diamonds are not indestructible. They're actually brittle. They do chip. They do break. Um, that's one thing you have to understand. Uh, but if you want to hold... Now, here's the thing. 
there's so much quote unquote uh, uh, different types of stones uh, in costume jewelry. How is somebody on the street? Let's just say we're in a collapse situation, <laughs> and I have a a three carat diamond uh, princess cut, um, e, you know, e color. Um, VVS one diamond sitting in my uh, in my coat pocket pocket, and I need to buy, I need to buy food to feed my family. If I take my VVS one E color diamond with uh, with flawless clarity, okay, the diamond could be worth about twelve to you know fifteen twenty thousand dollars, and I take it to some guy on the street. Hey man, you know I want to buy a month's supply of food. He'll take that diamond and. If I take an ounce of gold, you better believe he understands that. If I take a couple of ounces of silver with me, and he sees point nine 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 troy ounce, you know purity, and one one troy ounce, he'll definitely is ready to barter, ready to exchange. Heck, I could take a carton of cigarettes, a couple of bottles of of, uh, of Johnny Walker, you know, Blue Label, and he's, he's the guy will be ready to trade. So, you know. These are the options you have. So in, in terms of, like, precious stones, I wouldn't bother. I really wouldn't. I think it's foolishness. Um, because of the simple fact in the collapsed environment, there's no way of determining that what you have is real or not. Unless, of course, that guy... That guy before and I'm glad you you addressed that thank you very much for that um, it, at this point and I, I've been getting probably, probably uh, I, I must have folks we're, I'm not gonna we're not gonna have time to answer all the questions thank you very much for sending them in however uh, Chris T I'll, I'll uh, address yours separately off air uh, write you an email um, I'll just turn it back to to UV what should we be looking for uh, any uh, any signs that we, that we need to be looking for at this point. Um, uh, you know, as Steve said, we go to bed on, on Friday, wake up on Monday, whole different world ahead of us. A anything that we should be looking for to... I mean, again, we're, we're, we're that bus uh, that's on the ledge. You know, we've fallen off the ledge where we're on a on a on a on an outcropping this ledge that's kind of broken our fall into the into the complete abyss over here. So the the next sign to to look at is, is just continued cracking of the economy. You know, um, you know I wouldn't bother looking at you know the Dow. Uh, I would you know it's it's getting very difficult for the average Joe, you know, like to uh, to follow. Uh, what's going on really with the markets, uh, especially market news. Um, the things you have to continue to watch, I mean, look, it's not off the radar, folks. Japan is still there. It hasn't gone any. That's an issue. The, the currency crisis in Asia uh, is another issue. Look for those things to exacerbate itself. Um, look for, uh, I mean, you've seen the, you know, from my German sources have told me that Merkel stole the election, you know, so uh, look for more Eurocentric policies that will gut the German economy thanks to the ECM, European Stability Mechanism. And, um, you know, those are things to look for. Uh, look for the interest rates to climb even higher. As it's right now, we are QE to infinity. Uh, there was talks about a December taper. Uh, that's what they're talking about. Look, if they talk about a December taper, uh, look for another attempt at a false flag. Uh, if that doesn't occur, we are, we just, it's going to be business as usual with with. Uh, fine. It's multiple things coming at you at 180 miles an hour. You know, you got things moving at you at Bugatti Veyron-like speeds, and you need to uh, really uh, get a grasp that it's not one sign anymore. It's multiple things. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, you talk about in the military, they talk about force multiplication. Well, this is what's happening. You have so many economic events that are occurring at the same time that information is becoming force multiplied. Uh, 
now is the time to prepare. You know, you, you can't sit around watching for something to move. You got to move now. You know, that's what I said earlier. You got to have skin in the game now. The, the, the time for sitting on the fence is it's over. Thank you. And that's right. And Steve, I just want to say this. You, uh, I, I was, just got this. Uh, Michael, thank you. This, uh, these numbers, the numbers seen 19.5, you know, and things. I just got an email from Michael. Um, I just got an email from Michael, um, who, who, uh, who said, Josh Tolley, who's got a radio show, a very successful radio show, um, was talking today, the, as you mentioned, the Capitol Shield 14 drill was held in, in D.C. the same day when the, uh, Mary and Kerry ran the, the barricades. But something else that he mentioned was rather interesting. Uh, the Navy Yard shooter, uh, Aaron Alexis, and Miriam I know Hawk has covered it, I've covered it. The entire Manchurian candidate, how is it that this woman is, uh, thought Obama was communicating with her? You know, I mean, these people are hearing real sounds, ladies and gentlemen. These are not delusional people, okay? And these, the thing that people don't understand is, it was that the same thing the other day, the guy heard voices in the head? The neurophone, N-E-U-R-O-P-H-O-N-E, infrasonic, infrasonics, infrasound. They can put anything, and most people don't know, this is a real guy's name, you'd think it was a vodka manufacturer, but Igor Smirnov was at the Branch Davidian, a Russian, uh, one of the most expert guys in the world on this. His real name is Smirnov, you can Google it. And... right now from the Lord comes or originates that's dipped in your normal thought pattern in a, a, a vain imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Son of God so if you if you get a thought let's say we're, we're, we're praying one minute and all of a sudden you hear God is dead he doesn't love you or Jesus is alive any thought that's contrary to the Word of God you better understand that these guys have the technology on cell phone towers and HD TV when I first started talking about this Doug that was ten years ago when I first started talking about Gwen uh, Ground Wave Early Warning Network System, GWEN, that's the acronym, uh, people just couldn't handle it. Now we've got cell towers, uh, you know, within every quarter mile. When they turn the... Those things on, by the way, they're more than just cell towers. At a certain frequency, you go to sleep. At a certain frequency, you become a zombie. Their word, not mine. So when I see the shooting victim thought Obama was communicating with her, that tells me that a black op most likely had singled her out. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, this is not a very difficult jump for you. What is it that the two last dead people who basically were uh, murdered, and or the murderer or the murdered, became agitated and they both claim they had they were hearing thoughts in their head does that not tell you that there is a thread of truth running be or at least something that's unique or unusual doug it's my contention that this is how they're going to start the civil war in this country wow. the amount of money got in now hear me everyone no one else has said this that i know of they will Agitate. 
you think summer produces a long, hot summer? And uh, specified by uh, waveforms, if you will. You can actually watch them on a high-tech oscilloscope, and it's more than an oscilloscope, but you can watch them. Uh, brainwave activity. So uh, it's my contention that they're ratcheting it up. The rhetoric is ratcheting it up. Uh, the quote racism, uh, you know that, and and I believe that the racism. The argument against it absolutely screams out about those who are claiming it. The racism is, you know, basically, I'll tell you what it all boils down to, is, is that the division in this country, Jesus said, I House divided cannot stand, and I make the statement, I made it for 20 years, so it's nothing new. America will not stand. It's being split apart, and it's being split apart in the, in the psychological, in the emotional, in the physical, and soon to be the geological. It's all going to be split. And ladies and gentlemen, divide and conquer, that's what they plan to do. That's why they're taking the kids away. You take a man's kids away, and that man will do anything. He'll become compliant. Either that, or he'll flip out and become like George C. Scott in the movie Rage, when they killed his son with a biological experiment. If you've never seen that movie, you should rent it. Rage with George C. Scott. You'll see basically the government lying, lying, it into an angel until the guy figures out no one else but them, and then you watch Payback. Payback can be a bitch. I'm sorry for the word, but that's what the slogan is. And it's going to be in a multi-dimensional, multi-dimensional... to be strange that we always have these commonalities and they always take place during exercises. Think about it, pray on it, consider it, ponder it. Yeah, as an investigator, certainly don't discount it. That's for sure. Uh, v, I want to congratulate you on, on your successful launch of your website, roguemoney.net. That's roguemoney.net. Folks, it's well worth the cost of $2.99 a month. I, I'll just verify that. Of course, Steve Quayle, stevequayle.com. Uh, the, the portal to all the news that's important, as well as uh, uh, your access to uh, gold, silver, precious metals. I do have one last question for you, Steve, uh, from a listener who, uh, who, who asks if, uh, if you... Uh, 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 maintain, maintain the names of purchasers of precious metals if it's not required by law. I, I guess that that means it's over a certain amount, apparently. No, uh, let me just share this. Right now, there are no laws to do it. Number two, my uh, database is not online. Uh, number three, we still send out handwritten receipts. And number four, uh, let me just share this. I, I absolutely am not required to by law, so therefore I don't. Okay. Very good. Uh, v, any closing comments, my friend? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, just want to say for everybody just to, uh, you know, continue to prepare. I uh, just want to, you know, thank God that, you know, we bought some time. So let's all just, uh, you know, ride this momentum and, uh, you know, and, and hope for the best. You know, let's all, uh, you know, the best thing you You know, uh, time of preparation, time of, of worth, or some someone like that. Uh, but uh, that's about it. I mean, you know, you guys could, uh, anybody that's interested, could uh, check me out on uh, www.roguemoney.net. Uh, also, the sister site, uh, who is, a, is the man of genius, and especially the special man of being on revelationnow.net. We're, we're going to have him uh, on here. Revenue. Yeah, Michael Rebna, we're, we're going to have him on uh, uh, at some point here in the near future. I want to thank you for uh, making that introduction, B. Thank you so much for that. Yep. No problem. Steve? And uh, that's why oh. if anybody wants to reach out to me, you can go uh, to Gorilla Economist at Gmail. All right. Steve, you get the last word. Well, excuse me. Uh, I think that people should use this weekend as a time of pondering. I think they should really sit down and take a serious look, turn off the TV, just basically reflect on everything that's gone on, everything that's going on. Ask yourself, is this the same country?
fragmented as a joke, but if it's about your IRA, 401k, or whatever defined benefit plan, rolling it over into a third party uh, guardianship, I absolutely am not in favor of that. I would be a hypocrite to say so. I believe all of those accounts will ultimately be the first place taken. You don't have to go after 5,000 gold owners when they've got all their stuff stored at XYZ. Please, ladies and gentlemen, ponder that question. If even, and I'm not saying God's going to speak from heaven, he's not bound to, but if he did, what would you do differently? Because again, Jesus is not kidding when he said the night comes and no man can work. Work while it's yet day. And, and Jesus does love you. I'd encourage those who are uh, just guilt-ridden or shame-defiled to understand, though your sins be as scarlet, he, the Lord Jesus, will make them as white as snow. And the neat thing about this, you guys, remember, we're going to the wilderness, but what does it say in the Word of 90 God? 90 seconds. He prepares a banquet table. For us in the midst of our enemies. God how to feed the sparrow, he knows how to take care of everything in his creation, he'll certainly take care of you. And I'm praying for those of you that have been blessed financially that you'll understand that uh, only what we do here goes before us. We don't take anything with us, but we can send a lot of amazing stories of redemption ahead of us because we care enough for someone to make a difference seconds. in their life. Good night, everyone. God bless you, and, 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 and thank you, Doug. Thank you, Joe. Bless you guys. We thank you so much, and, and take care. Good night, gentlemen. God bless thank both you. of you. Good night. You guys have a great night. Tomorrow we'll be here at 6 p.m. with Yoda, then Sunday 8 to 11 p.m. with Steve and Pastor Langford. Till tomorrow, have a great night. Good night. Thank you.